of water and in case of sea water 10 meter depth increases so at a depth of 30 meter or so 30 meter or so the increased there is the total pressure is equal to four atmospheric pressure four atmospheric pressure four atmospheric pressure four atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure now the individuals who are exposed to this high pressure must breathe at this high pressure to maintain the same pressure outside and inside this chest cavity and abdomen abdomen yeah so the partial pressure of gases correspondingly increases increases partial pressure of gases within the alveoli do increase accordingly according and oxygen concentration of the environment is maintained less than 20% to avoid oxygen toxicity oxygen toxicity yeah. suppose if we are exposed to such a high pressure 30 meter depth four atmospheric pressure four atmospheric pressure roughly and if we are exposed to that and we have we are breathing against this pressure so the partial pressure of oxygen should go high and so the to avoid oxygen toxicity you are familiar with the term oxygen toxicity then the percentage of oxygen is reduced correspondingly so that it will not go very high very high depending depending upon the duration of exposure but nitrogen is the another gas important gas and that undergo solution in the tissues especially in the lipid tissues lipid tissues lipid tissues yeah. and they equilibrate gradually 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 their lipid solubility is not more but if an individual is exposed to considerable time then the amount that is dissolved it is considerable when you consider the amount of oxygen normally at one atmospheric pressure what it is what it is hey tumra distance ta barao sabse distance barabe dissociation i prefer always dissociation not association hmm bujhe jao sab samay distance barabe hoye ni bare you are unfortunate to come across my company and you always make distances because i am always against any form of association i prefer i prefer dissociation for better understanding of every subject now nitrogen is dissolved in our tissues and all the tissues do not have the same solubility it prefers the fatty tissues fatty tissues now when the partial pressure go on increasing and they are in the dissolved state dissolved state it is linearly related at a particular temperature particular temperature and so what happens in this situation to the breathing breathing and it is easy to remember 
by this acronym that is the h o n d and a nitrogen narcosis nitrogen narcosis nitrogen narcosis h o n d a by this acronym you can remember what are the physical changes or physiopathological changes can occur nitrogen narcosis suppose if an individual exposed at that distance and here it is four atmosphere now the nitrogen partial pressure is such that then there is the condition of euphoria euphoria rupture of the depth r a p t u r e rupture ullas it is due to dissolved nitrogen that is acting upon the brain euphoria euphoria yeah euphoria will be there and manual dexterity is maintained but in intellectual functions has has been impaired it is called nitrogen narcosis nitrogen narcosis yeah and you can avoid this by replacing nitrogen with helium with helium 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 i think you have understood what i am meaning if an individual is inhaling air at increased pressure at 30 20 to 30 meter then the atmospheric pressure is 3 to 4 atmosphere and in that case the dissolved nitrogen have its effect and this was the rupture of the depth or it is euphoria euphoria but intellectual functions are impaired manual dexterity is maintained manual dexterity is maintained and if and if you go even deep and it may be it may be it may have serious consequences and it is called nitrogen narcosis and you can avoid it by replacing nitrogen with helium and you can go at the deeper part more deep than that of with nitrogen because helium is less soluble and it is more diffusible its atomic weight or molecular weight is much less than that of nitrogen it can diffuse readily in spite of that if you go to at higher depth then high pressure high pressure nervous system high pressure nervous system are there high pressure nervous system nervous system even with helium helium even with the helium and there there may be tremor there may be tremor and in that case intellectual function is less impaired but manual dexterity is hampered dizziness somnolence somnolence sleepiness can appear high pressure nervous syndrome even with helium helium and why it is because those gases including nitrogen they are inert they are inert at normal conditions similarly other inert gases xenon krypton etc and they can dissolve in the cell membrane lipid membrane lipid membrane and they are and they have anesthetic effect anesthetic effect anesthetic effect anesthetic effect is due to the action on the membrane that is the channel proteins it has this effect so high pressure you cannot avoid this so high pressure nervous syndrome can develop not only with nitrogen and also with helium helium yeah now oxygen toxicity oxygen toxicity oxygen 
if oxygen concentration is not reduced then there is every chance of oxygen toxicity oxygen toxicity partial pressure at, at one atmosphere partial pressure of oxygen within the alveoli when we are exposed in one atmosphere is if, if anybody can remember hmm? what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli huh? uh, 100 mm of mercury 100 mm of mercury and if if an individual is exposed to 100 exposed to suppose if it is one atmosphere of oxygen pure oxygen then it is definitely toxic definitely toxic what should be the partial pressure of oxygen if you go on inhaling pure oxygen ami ager din eta alochona korechila bujhte perechu tomader probol onihya ke upekkha kore ami eta ager din alochona korechila are if an individual is taking one atmosphere of oxygen pure oxygen then it will replace the nitrogen and within the alveoli only three gases remain one is oxygen another is the water vapor saturated water vapor at body temperature and carbon dioxide and if you calculate we find the value greater than 600 mm of mercury and if a normal human volunteer take this oxygen for more than 8 hour or so then there are some problems are there problems are there there are some problems there are tracheobronchial irritation there may be sore throat there may be cough and like this type of problems you know. but if it is more than it is if it is hyperbaric then every chance of developing developing further events if it is poor atmospheres 50% of individuals if inhaling poor atmospheric pressure of oxygen then there is development within 30 that is the convulsions may appear within 50% of the individual in 30 minutes convulsions and in that case there is not only this only this tracheobronchial irritation and there may be muscle twitchings muscle twitches twitchings there may be convulsion there may be coma yeah coma and it may the convulsion may appear in 50% individual exposed to four atmospheric pressure of oxygen in 30 minutes but if individual exposed to six atmospheric pressure six atmospheric pressure then almost all the individual within a few minutes may have severe symptoms severe symptoms so the concentration or the fraction of oxygen is reduced so that it becomes less toxic less toxic less toxic so whenever there is oxygen toxicity may develop may develop and not only it is the problem of this who divers who are in caissons caissons they attack chambers but scuba divers scuba divers self contained underwater breathing apparatus scuba they will have the same they may have the same symptom scu scuba self contained underwater breathing apparatus with a tank and valve system and it is the mechanism of removal of carbon dioxide carbon carbon dioxide but the partial pressure of oxygen is controlled so that does not produce any form of 
or convulsions under the water and unconsciousness. Unconsciousness. Yeah. Oxygen toxic toxicity. It, it, it may cause lung damage. Lung damage. Decompression sickness. sickness. Decompression sickness. It is important for the examination. It appears as a short note in university. Physiology examination. Decompression sickness. Decompression sickness. If an individual go to a depth and then sub substantial amount of time is spent there and if there is and if the if the ascent gradually at stages at stages then there is no problem there is no no problem but if there is abrupt ascent from this depth then some problems do develop do develop that is called bends or decompression sickness decompression sickness yeah. Decompression sickness. Nitrogen is preferably dissolved in adipose tissue. But all the other tissues, there is a spectrum of their capacity of taking nitrogen. And if the ascent is rapid, and then the surrounding atmospheric, surrounding atmospheric pressure is low, low. Normally, if the ascent is gradual, the tissues will liberate the, liberate the excess nitrogen through the lungs, through the lungs, because blood is flowing through all the tissues, arterial blood, and by the mixed venous blood, mixed venous blood, it is reaching the right side of the heart, and by the pulmonary trunk, it is distributed into the alveol. And if it is, it is the descent is slow and it occurs in stages, then small bubbles will form and they will not cause any problem. They will cause no problem and they will be liberated in the expired air. But if the ascent is rapid and larger bubbles will come up, like the bottle of champagne or cold drinks, when you open, then there is carbon dioxide gas they are and they come out. Similarly, the bubbles will come out. The bubbles will come out. Yeah. And in different areas, it will create different problems. If it is around the joints, around the joints, it causes brains or severe pain. Pain. Brains. Around the joints, it causes severe pain. It is the brain is called brains. Pain. If air, if this air bubbles or nitrogen bubbles is present in the blood, then what it will cause? Then it will travel with the arterial blood and it can obstruct at a different sites, different sites. If it is very small one, it may not cause much problem, but it can obstruct the blood vessels. Suppose it is in the nervous tissue, cerebral vessels or vessels supplying the spinal cord and it is obstructed and blood is flowing is that then blood is incompressible but the air is compressible. Then it is compressible and it is not possible to have this capillarity or the surface tension to overcome. Surface tension to work because air is compressible, blood is flowing, that because blood is not compressible. There is no bubble within the our, our, our vascular system, and for this reason, they are flowing easily. There is an air bubble. If there is an air bubble, then it is it, will, it is compressible, and if it is possible, it may be pushed. And in the narrower part, it becomes obstruct. And it is not possible for the blood to overcome this. Overcome this. 
the surplus tension, surplus capillarity, it is not a possible. So the tissues distal to this will suffer from ischemia, suffer from ischemia, suffer from ischemia. Suppose in different brain areas, then there is every chance of even paralysis, paralysis. Spinal cord, different parts of the limbs can be affected, affected. Pressure of the blood can overcome the surface tension. Surface tension. There may be ischemia. Within the bones, there may be some ischemic necrosis of the bones. And if it is repeat, repeated exposure, then the necrosis of the bone may cause fracture also. In the coronary arteries, it can cause ischemia. Ischemia. And some of the bubbles can lodge within the pulmonary vessels, pulmonary vessels, and there may be they, it is called chokes or dyspnea. dyspnea. So many sorts of trouble can be there. And when the individual abruptly rises, and within 10 to 30 minutes, they will appear, and it will then progress. It will then progress. So what is done is that there is the graduate, there are staging at different heights and the gradual ascent and staging that is the some stages, some hours at a particular level and then some hours at another particular level and in this way the staging is done. It depends upon the depth of the the depth travel and the duration, duration. It may be possible, but this, this ascending process may be much longer than the total time required stayed in the depth to avoid this decompression sickness, decompression sickness, Quezon disease, or it's called Quezon disease. And this treatment is recompression. Recompression, recompression, and whenever there is recompression, then this bubbles will be smaller, and then gradual, gradual decompression, so that this is that there can this difficulties can be averted. Normally there may be complete recovery, but in some cases, whenever there is some destruction of the nervous system, like spinal cord or brain, then, then sequelae may be permanent, may be permanent. Sequelae can be permanent. And decompression system, um, um, this is, is, a, is a condition in which hyperbaric oxygen therapy can have their effect, good effect, hyperbaric oxygen therapy at two to three atmospheric pressures for limited period. We discussed the other. And it is due to this nitrogen that is available, nitrogen and decompression sickness. Treatment is recompression, recompression. Now A is air embolism, air embolism, air embolism, air embolism. It is related to breathing at Increase barometric pressure. If an individual, individual working at very depth, and due to some cause, and there may be panic, and by breath holding, the individual tries to go up quickly, quickly, and it may appear that there will be expansion of the air in the lungs expansion of air in the lungs and this expansion will be sufficient, produce sufficient pressure so that there will be rupture of the pulmonary blood vessels and air will enter air will, and air embolism can take place and it may cause sudden death and it may cause sudden death whenever air accumulates within the heart then it is possible 
that it will not be possible for the heart to pump this out pump this out because air is compressible compressible if there is sufficient air within the ventricular cavity then it by pumping action of the heart it is not possible to put it out completely and there will be collapse and death there will be no cardiac output in the situation sudden death can take place sudden death can take place and it has been seen there is the at relatively lower height even 5 meter or so this condition is possible possible so the individual should breathe out during ascent and quick ascent is dangerous in this situation air embolism air embolism and air embolism possible at height also at height also rarefied atmosphere artificial atmosphere is created in the aircraft and if this there is break of this pressure break of break of this cabin wall then there is same thing appears the gases will expand expand it is called explosive decompression explosive decompression what is it in a rarefied atmosphere jodi uro jahaj uro jahaj jekhane cabin pressure maintained ache shekhane jodi cabin shekhane jodi kotha leak hoy tale pore ki hobe shekhane rarefied atmosphere same thing will happen it is called explosive decompression explosive decompression explosive decompression decompression i have discussed the thing and i think that my delivery is not good and many points i have forgotten ji tumra pustak theke tomader gyan arjan kore nebe eta shudhu ekta i thaklo ekta idea thaklo many things of respiratory system remaining untouched like artificial respiration hypocapnia hypercapnia and many other things then it will be dealt in future if possible we, either in this class or in the demonstration class in the practical hours now we can continue something about your urinary system or kidney renal renal physiology last day we discussed about the renal plasma flow renal plasma flow is measured by i think you have gone through books renal plasma flow is measured by which way renal plasma flow kibhabe measure kara jay ah ekhane kono byakti ache je etar uttor ha dite parbe ha pasher moto uttor dite parbe erokom now we discussed about there is the renal blood flow it is 1 in the 1 2 1 2 1 roughly 25% of the cardiac output and renal plasma flow can be measured with para amino hypuric acid clearance para amino ph clearance clearance para amino hypuric acid clearance we discussed the other day. and this clearance is effective renal plasma flow effective renal plasma flow now to know the concept of clearance renal clearance concept of renal clearance renal clearance bolte ki bolta jay clearance 
that is the volume of plasma cleared of any substance through urine in unit time volume of plasma cleared of any substance through urine in unit time and it is the definition of renal clearance and this formula renal clearance and this if there is the concentration of any substance concerned in the urine and v dot that is the volume of urine eliminated per unit time and so that per unit time ux into v indicates the mass of that substance mass of the substance present in the urine in unit time and which volume of plasma contained it is the renal clearance of the substance renal clearance of the substance then it will the px is the plasma concentration of the substance plasma concentration of the substance this is called renal clearance renal clearance and by the renal clearance you can have some concept of the renal function of urea and measurement of gfr glomerular filtration rate and also renal plasma flow effective renal plasma flow from which actual renal plasma flow and from the actual renal plasma flow to renal blood flow these are extremely easy things amar mone hoy tomader ei sob subject gulo otonto sohoj mone hoy she jonno eto audashin কঠিন জটিল জিনিস হলে তবে মানুষের একটা আগ্রহ জন্মায় এত সহজ জিনিস বলে আর আগ্রহ তোমাদের আসছে না এত সহজ জিনিস আমাদের ক্লাসে কেন পড়ানো হচ্ছে চলবে কালক্রমে এরকম হয়ে যাবে নো ক্লাসেস অনলি অনলাইন ফিউসেন্টিং ইন দি ডিপার্টমেন্ট টু হ্যাভ দি এক্সামিনেশন ডান এক্সামিনেশন ডান অ্যান্ড গভর্নমেন্ট ইনস্টিটিউশন আর ইন্ট্রোডিউসিং দিস পার্ট because there they are they are all easy subjects suppose a few years required you are unfortunate suppose the condition of urea urea concentration of urea concentration of urea is urea. suppose it is 900 milligram per deciliter this urea ux and plasma concentration is plasma p urea 50 so from this value if you know this if you know this you can find out the clearance of urea clearance of urea clearance of urea urine fluoride is roughly 1 ml per minute 1 ml per minute minute er sankha hocche 1440 minutes 1440 minute 1440 minutes and urine flow normal in adult consider 1 to 1.5 liter roughly 1 ml per minute 1 ml per minute so if you replace the clearance of urea
বোঝা গেল দ্যাট ইস দি ভলিউম অফ প্লাজমা ক্লিয়ার অফ ইউরিয়া ইন ইউনিট টাইম ইউনিট টাইম ইউরিয়া কনসেনট্রেশন নাইন হান্ড্রেড মিলিগ্রাম পার ডিসিলিটার অ্যান্ড আই ডি নট কনভার্ট ইন টু এম এল বিকজ দি নিউমিনেটার অ্যান্ড ডিনোমিনেটার হেয়ার ইজ দি সেম ইউনিট সো ম্যাথামেটিক্যালি ইট ইস কারেক্ট ওয়ান শো ইট ইজ সিক্সটিন এম এল পার মিনিট দ্যাট ইজ পার পার মিনিট সিক্সটি এম এল অফ প্লাজমা কন্টেন্ট দ্যাট মাস অর ক্লিয়ার অফ দ্যাট সাবজেক্ট ইট ইজ দি ক্লিয়ারেন্স অফ ইউরিয়া and it is a renal function one of the renal function test but it is not gfr but it is not glomerular filtration rate it is lower than that of the glomerular filtration rate because urea is absorbed by the renal tubules renal tubules renal tubules renal tubules and it is the clearance of urea normally clearance of glucose is zero normally clearance of glucose is zero zero because normal urine does not contain any glucose normal urine does not contain any glucose so this clearance of glucose is zero that is the no part of plasma is cleared of glucose through urine so but it is not applicable to diabetic individuals diabetic individuals. normally clearance of glucose is zero now whatever amount of any substance that is present in the urine is the product that is filtered load plus that is amount that is transfer direct transfer tx suppose you consider the case of a nephron present in the urine is ux into v per unit time eliminated now it is possible x is coming and it is possible that x is coming from outside to inside it is the process of secretion secretion or it is the process of reabsorption 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 so whatever that is present in the urine is that of the filtered load what is amount that is filtered is a filtered load it is multiplication of gfr gfr into plasma x filterable at least the filterable portion plasma x plasma concentration of x multiplied by the glomerular filtration and it is plus minus tx plus minus tx that is transfer 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 whenever there is net secretion net secretion it will be positive and when it is net reabsorption then it becomes negative 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 so if you consider from this formula then you have to consider the clearance of any substance in in in, in that case this part is zero there is no net transfer no net transfer yeah it is fully filtered it is fully filtered at the time it is not reabsorbed nor secreted it is untouched if there is suppose in this case there is no and there is no reabsorption no reabsorption and no secretion it is untouched 
So whatever amount that is present in unit time in the urine is that is filtered, freely filtered. It must be freely filtered. Freely filtered. Freely filtered means its concentration in the plasma is equal to that of the concentration in the Bowman space. Then it is freely filtered. Freely filtered. Suppose the inulin, if you consider the case of inulin, 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 a carbohydrate, a fructose polymer of molecular weight 5 to 0, 0, it will not bind to, bind to any protein or so, and this small molecule, and it is freely filtered, neither secreted nor reabsorbed, nor reabsorbed. It is non toxic and it is not metabolized, metabolized. So its clearance is equivalent to of the GFR, equivalent to that of the GFR. If this part is zero, then it clearance will be, clearance of inulin will be GFR. GFR. Global filtration rate, global filtration rate. So, in practice, what is done? Infusion. Infusion, a loading dose of inulin is given intravenously and then it is continued in such a way that ultimately there is an equilibrium. Equilibrium to the body fluids. Body fluids. And when this is achieved, then for a limited period, urine is collected and in the half of this position, half time position, a sample of blood is collected. And in concentration in the arterial side and venous side is equal because it is not metabolized. Metabolized. And you get from the urine sample, you get that is the volume and the clearance and the concentration of inulin. Then urinary inulin concentration, inulin concentration into V divided by plasma inulin. In good text, there are some examples, some values are uh, given so that you can have some idea. If I can remember properly, 35 milligram per ml, B is 0.9 ml per minute, divided by 0.25 milligram per ml. And it is 126. 126. Is given. A value is given in a reliable text. And in this way, it can be, and it is the gold standard. Gold standard. But it is difficult to difficult to perform. So endogenous endogenous creatinine creatinine clearance is done. Creatinine. Creatinine clearance. Creatinine clearance. Clearance is done. Endogenous creatinine. It is an endogenous substance. Creatinine is derived from creatine. Creatine present in in which tissue creatine is present? Uh, muscle. Very good. Muscle. Creatine phosphate. It is an alternative of adenosine triphosphate, triphosphate. When the muscles are exercising, when ATP is lost, then creatine phosphate can give this phosphate energy as energy. It is converted into, this phosphate can be given to ADP. 
to produce more ATP so that can be utilized, utilized. And its anhydride of creatine is creatinine. Anhydride of creatine is creatinine. It is an endogenous substance and it is eliminated, eliminated, eliminated. And it is freely filtered, freely filtered. It is to some extent secreted and maybe to some extent reabsorbed. But there is a small secretion of this, small secretion. And in that case, there is some amount of, there is some, some uh, amount of secretion and some amount is also reabsorbed. So, there is this small amount of, there is this GFR. So, in this case, there is the you create to GFR plasma creatinine plus small amount of TCI. So, clearance of creatinine that is this PCR is equal to GFR and it is a negligible amount. So that if you consider that small amount is secreted and it is when it is measured creatinine concentration is low, low then in the plasma creatinine it is to some extent overestimated because, because it also measures some amount of other substances, non-specific substances. So the ratio almost cancel each other, each other and you get a value that is close to that of 2 GFR of clearance of inulin in most conditions. 24 hours urine is collected and it can be measured and it is relatively easier than that of the measurement of inulin clearance, creatinine clearance, creatinine clearance. But in reality, plasma creatinine plasma creatinine is measured and from its value some estimation can be done with that of the GFR, GFR. Because normally day in day out the creatinine production is more or less constant, more or less constant. So it is in, in, inversely proportional to that of the GFR. Suppose if you consider this case, now this part is more or less constant. So, clearance is inversely proportional to plasma creatine. Plasma creatinine level when high, then you can think that the GFR is low, inversely proportional. And clinically in most cases, creatinine clearance is not done. Plasma concentration of creatinine can have some predictive value in most situations. Yeah. So, in this way, GFR can be calculated and if you go through medicine texts, you will find other approaches, other approaches where urine collection cannot be done. Then other radioactive measures also is required, but in physiology we are not going into that details. If you are interested, you can consult the medicine texts. They give up, they give other uh, ways by measuring the uh, serial values of uh, plasma substance of some substances, radioactive sub substances, when collection of urine is not possible.
in some individual. Yeah. Now normal value, normal value is 125, young adult male, it is 125 ml per minute. One twenty-five ml per minute, and per day it becomes one eighty liter. One eighty liter per day. In young adult male, in young adult male, and it has correspondence with that of the body surface area. Even if it is connected to the body surface area, it is lower. To some extent, in case of women, and with age, when age advances, and its value diminishes gradually, gradually, diminishes gradually. Per year, one liter per day, it can reduce. It can reduce. Produce. And in this way, you can consider this huge amount of filtered is produced. It is four times as the total body water. Total body water. Total body water. Total body water. What is the percentage of body weight? Is total body water normally? Huh? Percentage of body weight that is total body water. Huh? Kotha percent? Kotha percent? अरे जोरे बोले इतने कुनो इतने कहने के लिए कुनो पुलिसी का पान ना है। एकदम शाहौत जीनी चाहिए एकदम शाहौत जीनी। ये sixty percent of the body weight. Sixty percent of the body weight. कजी शत्तूर के जी जुदी है, ताले छः सत्ता बियालिश, and you it you can take forty five, so it is total body water, four times the total body water per day is our extra cellular fluid volume is roughly in an sixty to seventy के जी individual. It is 20 percent of the body weight, so 12 liter. So if you take that is this, volume 15 times, 15 times, and 60 into 3 plasma volume, 60 times the plasma per day. That is a field. That is field. Huge amount of field is there. And that is required to eliminate all the substances. And urine form per day, roughly one liter per day. One liter per day. So, what amount? What percent of the filtered load of water is reabsorbed? Then it is. One seventy nine, one seventy nine by one eighty. More than ninety nine percent. More than ninety nine percent of the filtered load in a normal individual is reabsorbed. Reabsorbed. Be observed. Now we can recapitulate to some extent. Suppose when you are considering that substance that are secreted, secreted, glucuronides of the steroids, they are filtered at the time same time they are secreted. Glucuronides. We discuss the metabolic products. Of the steroid hormones, they form tetrahydroglucuronides, and they are secreted. 
they are filtered and they are still secure. And typical example we discussed the other day is para amino hypuric acid clearance. Para amino hypuric acid clearance. And in that this clearance will be more than GFR because TX. Suppose if we consider the case where it is this. to consider this case plus this value plus this value plus this value and paraben hypoxic acid is freely filtered at the same time it is actively secreted secreted in the proximal tube and when its concentration is low almost all the Almost all the pH present in the circulation is eliminated by single circulation. Single circulation. This, to some extent, theoretical concept. Ninety percent becomes free of that of the pH. From apparent arterial to the glomerulus, and when it traverses to there is the peritubular capillaries. After it going into the when a site it becomes theoretically it becomes almost free of ph and extraction ratio is 90% in decimal fraction it is 0.9, 0.9. and so it's there is no need of no need of the sampling of the renal vein renal vein renal vein so the fixed principle relating to this ph measurement of renal blood flow plasma flow is reduced to that of the clearance of ph and is renal vein sample renal vein is not measured and paraben hypoxic acid is not metabolized so its concentration in the peripheral vein is almost equal to that of the renal arterial plasma and it is effective renal plasma flow effective renal plasma flow effective renal plasma flow suppose it is ph and ph is extensively secreted actively secreted so its concentration concentration in the blood is almost nil almost nil It is more this. It is almost new, almost new at at that point. So renal vein we, co we are taking its concentration is, is zero. In fixed principle, that is present in the urine in unit time divided by the renal arterial plasma minus renal venous plasma. We consider renal venous plasma as zero, and renal arterial plasma concentration is equal to peripheral venous. Paraben hypoxic acid, so it becomes converted into it is reduced to clearance of pH, and it is called effective renal plasma flow. So clearance of pH, pH. And from which we can get the renal plasma flow, actual renal by dividing it by. Renal renal plasma flow is equal to is equal to that of clearance of pH divided by divided by extraction ratio extraction ratio extraction ratio is equal to renal arterial plasma concentration minus renal venous plasma concentration divided by renal arterial plasma concentration and we learn. And from the hematocrit, and from the hematocrit, we can get the renal blood flow. The topic is anatomy of the coronary arteries. Anatomy of the coronary arteries, providing the heart, providing namely the cardiac muscle. 
its everlasting demand of oxygen plus the nutrients jigache tar anatomy of the coronary arteries is very important because these are the arteries which are providing nourishment and the all important oxygen to the demand made by the cardiac musculature or myocardia এই লাল চক দাও লাল লাল চক নেই লাল আর নীল দাও সব ভাঙা this is the topic of today's class coronary arteries first of all i will urge you i will urge you all to try to draw a diagram what i am drawing on the board please make a trial tar karon coronary arteries is very important from examination point of view and you need to draw a diagram whenever you are asked to say something about the coronary arteries ঠিক আছে 10 নম্বর 15 নম্বরের क्वेश्चन এলে তোমাকে কিন্তু ছবি আঁকতেই হবে ছবি না এঁকে কিন্তু coronary arteries এর आंसर হবে না ঠিক আছে তাহলে আই আই উইল আই উইল বি ড্রয়িং এ ভেরি সিম্পলিফাইড ডায়াগ্রাম অফ দা coronary arteries ট্রাই টু রিপ্রোডিউস ইন ইওর কপিস দা ডায়াগ্রাম দ্যাট আই অ্যাম শোইং ইউ i have only draw the course i have only drawn the course of an artery thik ache one of the coronary arteries i am not saying which one is this right now
আচ্ছা দিস আর দ্য করোনারি আর্টারিজ ঠিক আছে দ্য আর্টারি অন দ্য রাইট ইজ অবভিয়াসলি দ্য রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি দ্য আর্টারি অন দ্য লেফট অফ দ্য ডায়াগ্রাম ইজ দ্য লেফট করোনারি আর্টারি অ্যান্ড সাম অফ ইটস ব্রাঞ্চেস ঠিক আছে নাও অল দিস করোনারি আর্টারিজ হ্যাভ গট অ্যাব্রিভিয়েশনস এদের জন্য অ্যাব্রিভিয়েশনস আছে বিকজ করোনারি আর্টারি ডিজিজ করোনারি আর্টারি ডিজিজ এ কমন এলমেন্ট অ্যাফেক্টিং দ্য মডার্ন ডে হিউম্যান্স ঠিক আছে কাজে অল দিস আর্টারিজ হ্যাভ গট অ্যাব্রিভিয়েশনস প্রত্যেকটার জন্য একটা অ্যাব্রিভিয়েশন আছে মনে রাখবে তার কারণ করোনারি অ্যাঞ্জিওগ্রাম করোনারি অ্যাঞ্জিওগ্রাম ভিজুয়ালাইজিং দ্য করোনারি আর্টারিজ ইন লাইফ ঠিক আছে ইজ এ ফ্রিকুয়েন্টলি অ্যাডাপ্টেড প্রসিডিওর ইন কার্ডিয়াক পেশেন্টস করোনারি অ্যাঞ্জিওগ্রাম ওর করোনারি অ্যাঞ্জিওগ্রাফি আমরা এই রকম ছবি দেখতে পাব এবং সেখানে ডক্টরস অর ক্লিনিশিয়ান্স ইউজ অ্যাব্রিভিয়েশনস ফর দ্য ডিফারেন্ট করোনারি মেন করোনারি আর্টারিজ অ্যান্ড দেয়ার ব্রাঞ্চেস আচ্ছা নাও এখানে আমি আর একটু মডিফাই করব নাথিং ডুইং আর একটু আমি একটা মডিফাই করছি ডায়াগ্রামটা তোমার একটু অসুবিধা হবে কারণ তুমি তো পেন দিয়ে আঁকছো কিন্তু একটু মডিফাই আমাকে করতে হবে ঠিক আছে একটু মডিফাই আমি করব চালিয়ে দিতে পারি এইটা দিয়ে কিন্তু একটু মডিফাই করলে ভালো হবে একটু মডিফাই করলে ভালো হবে না করলেও আমি দেখো এবার আই এম নেমিং দ্য করোনারি আর্টারিজ ঠিক আছে নাউ ইট ইস টাইম টু নেম দ্য করোনারি আর্টারিজ দিস ওয়ান করোনারি আর্টারি দিস ইজ করোনারি আর্টারি আর সি এ দিস ইজ দ্য মেন ট্রাঙ্ক অফ দ্য রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি right coronary artery is meant for supplying the right heart right coronary artery is meant for supplying the right heart meaning the right atrium the right ventricle ঠিক আছে plus plus a part of the left ventricle plus a part of the muscular interventricular septum ঠিক আছে তার কারণ দেখো দ্য মেন ট্রাঙ্ক অফ দ্য রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি পার্সুস অ্যালং দ্য হার্ট সারফেস একটা বেশ লং কোর্স আছে মেন ট্রাঙ্ক অফ দ্য রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি ঠিক আছে তাহলে ইট সাপ্লাইজ দ্য রাইট হার্ট প্লাস এ পার্ট অফ দ্য লেফট হার্ট নেমলি দ্য লেফট ভেন্ট্রিকুল অ্যান্ড এ পার্ট অফ দ্য ইন্টার ভেন্ট্রিকুলার মাস্কুলার ইন্টার ভেন্ট্রিকুলার সেপটাম ঠিক আছে Since it pursues quite a long course over the surface of the heart. Kutai thakke shetao jantai hawe aami bol chhi. Tari this is the RCA. This is also the parent trunk of RCA. Achcha. This vessel is a very important branch from the RCA. This is being called in anatomy textbooks as posterior interventricular artery but clinicians never call it as posterior interventricular artery they call it as posterior descending artery ঠিক আছে it is upon the posterior surface of the heart and in anatomical position of the heart in life or in cadaver 
it goes down like this thik ache therefore they call it as pda posterior descending artery this term you have to know thik ache clinicians er term ta tomake jante hobe tale this is being called as pda posterior descending artery in anatomy we call it as posterior interventricular artery why because this artery we will search for in the posterior interventricular groove between the right ventricle left ventricle upon the surface of the heart we find interventricular grooves an anterior one and a posterior one thik ache occupying most of the posterior interventricular groove will be the posterior descending artery or in anatomy we will call it as posterior interventricular artery thik ache interventricular groove e thake bolu holo khub sohoj kintu naam mone rakha kono oshubidha nei acha now let us proceed amra kintu onno kono branch dekhachhi na the right coronary artery has got so many other branches but for now focus upon this branch only pda posterior descending artery and the main trunk this is being called this artery this segment of this artery left artery this is main coronary artery lmca left main coronary artery देखो राइट कॉर्नरी आर्टरी हैज गॉट ए लॉन्ग कोर्स अक्रॉस द सरफेस ऑफ द हार्ट बट द लेफ्ट कॉर्नरी आर्टरी इट हैज गॉट ए वेरी शॉर्ट कोर्स ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ द हार्ट एंड दैट सेगमेंट इज बीइंग कॉल्ड एज लेफ्ट मेन कॉर्नरी आर्टरी एलएमसीए नाउ रीचिंग दिस पॉइंट इन द हार्ट the artery divides into two very important branches usually divides into two very important branches one is this one this larger one this is being called as clinicians they called is called this vessel as lad left anterior descending artery left anterior descending artery this is being called as left anterior descending artery left anterior descending artery in anatomy we call it as anterior interventricular ramus of the left coronary artery since it occupies the entire anterior interventricular sulcus and then anterior interventricular sulcus in anatomy we call it as anterior interventricular artery since it occupies the anterior interventricular groove again between the right ventricle left ventricle the groove is upon the anterior surface of the heart tale oshubidha nei kichu mone rakhar ki the anatomy term dekho ei artery and then running in the posterior interventricular groove eta kintu posterior anterior interventricular groove e ache ei segment ta anterior interventricular groove e ache thik ache now this vessel this branch this is another very important branch of lmca left main coronary artery this runs towards the right coronary artery trunk tai eta edike asche eta edike asche right main coronary artery what is its name the circumflex branch of left coronary artery in anatomy it is being called as circumflex branch of left coronary artery clinicians they call it as l x a x a circumflex artery ঠিক আছে left circumflex artery
हार्ट Within the rings and loops formed by the coronary arteries and their branches, ये जो छोबीटा आ चें, ये छोबीटा रहते हो रे, आमी heart टके ढूँकिए दोगे, ठीक आ चें? I will put the heart within the ring formed by the coronary arteries and within the loop formed by the coronary artery branches, ठीक आ चें? ये बार देखो आमी heart टके ढूँका चें. छवि Coronary arteries are so called because the main coronary arteries and their major branches resemble a crown upon the fallen head of a king. Fallen head of a king, the crown tightly packed. Eta oche rajar matha. Eta rajar matha. Mujhe chhu. राजार माथार चार पास रिंग हाफ लुकट बुझे इन दर्म अफ ए क्राउन बुझे कारण करी आर्टरिज दे लाइ अपन दर्फेस आउटसाइड द हार्ट कजी द मेन करी आर्टरिज एंड दे आर मेजर ब्रांचेस दे रिजेम्बल ए क्राउन फिटिंग टाइटली अपन द फल हेड अफ ए किंग गलाटा काटा पड़े क्राउन शुद्ध राजारे पड़े गुजे तो करना मान क्राउन करना कथाटार मान हम क्राउन से बुझे करी आर्टरिज आर बी सो कल ठीक मेजर ब्रांचेस तुम देखले ब्रांचेस देखा हो ग लेफ्ट मेन कर्नारी आर्टरी लेफ्ट मेन कर्नारी आर्टरी दो ब्रांच आप देखते एक एन एक्स ए 
Sakam Fresh Branch of the Lake Main Coronary Artery. ब्रांचेस मेजर ब्रांचेस ऑफ द मेन टू कॉर्नरी आर्टरीज नेक्स्ट व्हाट यू हैव टू नो राइट कॉर्नरी आर्टरी सप्लाइज व्हिच हार्ट मेनली द राइट हार्ट ठीक है इट इज ऑन द राइट पहले इट शुड सप्लाई द राइट हार्ट व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय राइट हार्ट राइट हार्ट इंक्लूड्स द हार्ट द सेगमेंट ऑफ द इंटीग्रेटेड ह्यूमन हार्ट दैट डील्स विथ the deoxygenated systemic venous blood ठीक है right heart right atrium right ventricle deals with deoxygenated systemic venous blood ठीक है left heart deals with oxygenated blood received from the lungs ठीक है which will be thrown into the systemic circulation and into the coronary arteries to perfuse the heart the left coronary artery mainly supplies the left heart right coronary artery mainly supplies the right heart plus right coronary artery supplies a part of interventricular septum and a part of left ventricle therefore which one of the two coronary arteries is dominant in human heart in 85% of cases the right coronary artery dominance will be there eta mone rakhte hobe coronary artery dominance eta clinicians are too often use kore thik ache tale in 85% of human hearts in 85% in 7.5% of cases in 7.5% of cases left coronary artery is the dominant one in the rest 7.5% of cases in the rest 7.5% of cases, neither of the two is dominant thik ache tahole we are finding a balanced pattern of circulation thik ache dutu coronary artery soman soman ongsho ke supply kore seta ke amra bolchi balanced type of circulation coronary circulation prevailing in those heart tale in 7.5% cases neither will be dominant such cases এইবার কথাটা হচ্ছে হাউ ডু উই টেল হুইচ আর্টারি ইজ দ্য ডমিনেন্ট আমি তোমাকে ইন ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ বলেছি যে রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি সাপ্লাই ইজ এ পার্ট অফ উইট টেল হুইচ আর্টারি ইজ ডমিনেন্ট ইজ দে আর এনি পয়েন্ট কোনো ক্রাইটেরিয়া আছে ইয়াস দে আর মাস্ট বি এ ক্রাইটেরিয়ান ঠিক আছে ক্রাইটেরিয়ানটা কি ক্রাইটেরিয়ানটা হচ্ছে এই পয়েন্টটা this point this area in the human heart this point is called as the crux c r u x crux ei ajke sare ra poraben tomake heart demo class e ei jayga ta ke amra bolchi oi point ekta point ache thik ache oi jayga ta ke amra boli crux of the human heart thik ache eta anatomy porikkha dewar jonno नेक्स्ट परीक्षा देवर नीट पिजी देवर भीषण ही इम्पर्टेंट ठीक है क्रक्स कतार नाम की क्रक्स सीमैन हार्ट ठीक है क्रक्स अब द्यूमैन हार्ट इज दैट पॉइंट ठीक है दैट पॉइंट ऑन द सार्फेस अब द्यूमैन हार्ट वेर the interatrial septum interatrial septum this crux 
where do we search for the crux we search for the crux upon the posterior surface of the heart ঠিক আছে upon the posterior surface of the heart where the interatrial septum interatrial septum ধরো এরকম একটা জিনিস আছে that will be reaching the inferior or posterior surface ঠিক আছে হাতটা দেখবে between the atria there will be a partition that partition will fall upon the inferior or posterior surface the crux is the point where the interatrial septum the interatrial interventricular septum and the atrioventricular rings tar mane atria ventricular er majkhane je ring ache where the atrioventricular valve cusp will be attached bujhecho ei tinte junction tahole atrioventricular to kono septum nei ache kintu jai hok seta atrioventricular junction e nei kono partition nei partition thakle atria theke ventricle e jabe ki kore blood ki ache instead dorja ache thik ache bores ache provided with cusp thik ache তাহলে ওই জায়গাটাকে আমরা এক্সিওভেন্টিকুলার জাংশনাল টিস্যু বলতে পারি তাহলে ক্রাক্স ইজ দ্য পয়েন্ট ওয়ার দ্য ইন্টারএট্রিয়াল জাংশনাল টিস্যু ইন্টারভেন্টিকুলার জাংশনাল টিস্যু এন্ড দ্য এট্রিওভেন্টিকুলার জাংশনাল টিস্যু মিট আপন দ্য পোস্টেরিয়র সারফেস অফ দ্য হার্ট তার মানে এইখানে এই জায়গাটায় এই জায়গাটা ইন্টারএট্রিয়াল সেপ্টাম আছে ঠিক আছে once it crosses the crux it is in the domain of the left heart left heart e chole gelo to tar karon eta to ki posterior interventricular groove e pechonei to left heart ache left ventricle ache tale obviously it will be supplying a part of the free wall of the left ventricle thik ache holo when the left coronary artery is dominant what will happen seta tumake jante hobe the circumflex branch this branch this branch will be crossing the crux thik ache and will be supplying the pda thik ache eta ekhane ashbe ekhane ashbe eshe ei ta ke supply korbe right বুঝেছো তাহলে দা করোনারি আর্টারি মেন করোনারি আর্টারি অর ইটস অর ওয়ান অফ ইটস মেজর ব্রাঞ্চেস দা ওয়ান দ্যাট ক্রসেস দা ক্রাক্স উইল বি দ্য ডমিনেন্ট আর্টারি ওনলি ইন সেভেন পয়েন্ট ফাইভ পার্সেন্ট কেস ঠিক আছে কেসেস দ্য লেফট করোনারি আর্টারি উইল বি ডমিনেন্ট ঠিক আছে ব্যালেন্সটা কি হবে ইন ব্যালেন্স সার্কুলেশন the left the circumflex branch reaching this point will be in a branch like this thik ache in the posterior interventricular groove the right coronary artery which again occupy the interventricular groove that we will be finding double pds dual pds dutu artery ke amra dekhte pete pari running from the crux thik ache towards the apex of the heart in such cases the circulation will be called as balanced thik ache dutu artery asche left and right reaching the crux each one will be giving a branch in the posterior interventricular groove thik ache tale dominance bojhata emon kichu oshubidhi nei acha from this diagram it is pretty clear আচ্ছা 
These are the arteries that perfuse the heart with nutrients and oxygen. It must be getting blood from some other artery. Which is the artery responsible for perfusing the heart? Heart, since it is the central vital organ, it took no chance. No chance in Japan. Amake rokto pitei hobi. Amake bachtei hobi. কোনো সুযোগ নেই আমাকে বাঁচতে হবে কাজেই ইট ট্যাপস দ্য রুট অব দ্য এ ওটা এ ওটা যাবি গিয়ে আমাকে দেবি ওসব করলে হবে না আমি আগে ট্যাপ করব রুট থেকে খাবো যেখানে ওটা বেরোচ্ছে সেখান থেকেই করোনারি আঠারি তৈরি নেচার বুঝলে তো তোমার আমার থেকে অনেক বেশি বুদ্ধিমান হাউ টু গিভ লাইফ অ্যান্ড হাউ মেকিং প্রসিডিওর ফর ইট সারভাইভাল সব করে রেখেছে ওই যে ওটা এত বড় ভেসেল প্রোভাইডিং অক্সিজেন অ্যান্ড নিউট্রিয়েন্টস টু ইচ অ্যান্ড এভরি পার্ট অফ দ্য বডি তার রুট থেকেই আমরা অরিজিন অফ করোনারি আর্টারিস দেখতে পাব ঠিক আছে এবার রুটে কি আছে আজকে যখন হার্ট দেখবে অবশ্যই লুক অ্যাট দ্য রুট অফ দ্য ওটা আমি আমার ওই বড় হার্টে কাউকে কাউকে দেখিয়েছি ঠিক আছে রুট অফ দ্য এ ওটা সেমিলুনার ভালভ আছে আমি দেখিয়েছি যারা দেখনি আজকে দেখবে ভীষণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট রুট অফ দ্য অ্যাসেন্ডিং এ ওটা আর এ ওটা রুটে কি আছে রুটে তোমাকে আমি কি দেখিয়েছি আমি দেখিয়েছি ভাল্ভ কাস সেমিলুনার ভাল্ভ কাস কার্ডিওভাস্কুলার ফিজিওলজি হয়ে গেছে মনে হয় হয়ে গেছে না হয়েছে তো তাই তো অবশ্যই হয়েছে আমি জানি তাহলে সেমিলুনার ভাল্ভস হোয়েন ডু দে ওপেন দে ওপেন ডিউরিং সিস্টেম ঠিক আছে টু রিসিভ ভেন্টিকুলার ব্লাড एटिक एंड पालमारि बाल्ब दे ओपेन दे रिमेन ओपेन थ्रु आउट देंटिकुलर सिसटेम टू अलाउ भेंटिकुलर ब्लाड टू गाश इन इन टू दर्टेरियल ट्रांस बी इट दालमारि ट्रांस और दिमिलुलर भाल्ब वेन टू दे क्लोज दे क्लोज ड्यूरिंग डोल हुई इज माच लंगार दैन सिसटोल ठीक है তাহলে ডিউরিং ডায়াস্টোল ভেন্টিকুলার ডায়াস্টোল দ্য সেমিলুনার ভালভ উইল বি ক্লোজিং সেমিলুনার ভালভ ওয়েন দ্য ওপেন হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন দে উইল বি দে আর ওপেনিং তাহলে দে উইল ফল আপন দ্য ওয়াল অফ দ্য ইউটা অর ওয়াল অফ দ্য পালমুনার ইচরাম ঠিক আছে বাট ওয়েন দে ক্লোজ ওয়েন দে ক্লোজ দ্য ওয়াল অফ দ্য পালমুনার ইচরাম অর ইউটা ঠিক আছে উইল বি নেকেড কাজ তো নেই নেকেড হয়ে যাবে ছবি দেখে দেখিয়ে দিচ্ছি এটা খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট ধরো এটা ওটা ঠিক আছে আমি এটা একটা সেকশন একটা সেকশন থ্রু দ্য এটা এটিক রুট The valve cusp will be like this. I mean, the cusp of the second of simply sectional profile and this is the same. I mean, I can see it in the circle. I can see it in the circle. দেখো আমি আর একটা এখানে পাশে একটা ডায়াগ্রাম দেখাচ্ছি 
सर्कुलर प्रोफाइल दे सर्कुलर प्रोफाइल एटिक रूट ठीक है के देखी थ्रू दूमेन अब दूटा जे रखम तुम बडी ते देखे ठीक है कम देखी वेन दल्व आर क्लोज हमें देखते पाई देखते पे क्लियरलिस्ट्राम चले जाड इज गाशिंग इन टू दूटा ट उल हैपन ब्लाड चले ग During ventricular diastole, when the valve closes, what will happen? Close for a gas. Now let's see. Between the aortic, between the wall of the aorta at its root and the cusp. देखते आज के जो हार्ट देखे सैडरा देखा बुझे चो वन यू लुक इन दिस पकेट यू उल फाइन In the lumen, the cast will be there, and the wall of the aorta there presents specializations. Would you? Who do call specialization? Ekhane wale, amra aero ko parikshan the babu. रूट But in case of pulmonary trunk, it is not important. You need not have to look. Okay, you have to look for the cusp of the pulmonary valve, but you need not have to look for the pulmonary sinuses. That is not important. But you have to identify the aortic sinuses of vessel valve. If the name is such, this is dilated area. It is a sectional profile. So you can see that you have to look at the aortic sinuses of vessel valve. This is the case. बुझेटिक 
তাহলে তিনটে কাজ পাচ্ছি কটা ইউটিক সাইনাসেস থাকবে তিনটে ঠিক আছে এইবার এই তিনটে যে ইউটিক সাইনাসেস বা ভাসাল বা আছে তাদের নাম আছে নাম মুখস্থ করতে হবে ভীষণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট ঠিক আছে তাহলে এই ডায়াগ্রামে এবার চলে আসছে ইউটিক রুটে ওয়ার উই আর সার্চিং ফর দ্য সেমিলুনার ভাল কাস উই হ্যাভ টু লুক for the aortic sinuses of vasalva since the number of cusps are three sinuses will be three thik ache sinuses are nothing but dilatations affecting the aortic wall at its root thik ache tale dilated jayga ta ke ami ei rokom dekhacchi ami ekta onno kare dekhacchi আমি একটু ফুরিয়ে দিলাম বেতনের মতো ঠিক আছে এবার দেখো আমি কাজগুলোকে যে রেখেছি এদের প্রত্যেকটা নাম আছে এবং ওদের যে নাম সেই নামকে ফলো করেই সাইনাসের নাম দেওয়া হয়েছে ঠিক আছে this is also the free margin of another posterior aortic cusp tale posterior e kota pelam duto anterior e kota pacchi ek tahole amake specify korte hobe tale ekta right ache ekta left ache tale this one is the right this one is the right and this Sinuses are three in number. Anterior aortic sinus, right posterior aortic sinus, left posterior aortic sinus. All these sinuses are very important because in these sinuses we have to search for the ostia of the coronary arteries. Aperture leading into the coronary arteries. in life under the guidance of camera and instruments cardiologists used to push radio opaque dye into the coronary arteries through this ostia bujhecho ei ostia diye catheter dukate hobe dukie dye push korbo ei ostia diye वर्ल्ड कप फुटबल कि ডেনিস ফুটবলার ক্যাপ্টেন এরিকসন মাঠে পড়ে গেল সাডেন কোলাপস ওই দেশ বলে বেঁচে গেল বহু ফুটবলার আছে সাডেন ডেথ হয় আজকে ক্যান্টিনে আমার কথা হচ্ছিল আমি এমনই হতভাগা আমার চাকরির প্রথম আমাকে ডেথ ডিক্লেয়ার করতে হয়েছিল এরকম একটা অল্প বয়সী ছেলেকে ফুটবল গ্রাউন্ডে কিন্তু আমি বেঁচে গিয়েছিলাম ঠিক আছে আমি মার খাইনি তুমি ভাবো আমি জাস্ট হাউস অফশিপ কমপ্লিট করবে ইন দা ইউটিক সাইনাসেস দুটো করোনারি আর্টারি আছে রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি অস্টিয়াম ইউ হ্যাভ টু সার্চ ফর ইন দা অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ইউটিক সাইনাস তার মানে 
এই যে ওয়ালটা আছে এটা সেকশনাল প্রোফাইল এই ওয়ালটার একটা ডেপথ আছে এই ওয়ালে তোমাকে দেখতে হবে দেখি তো কোথায় ফুটোটা আছে এবার ওই ফুটো দিয়ে তুমি প্রবিং করো সুরেশের কাছ থেকে একটা তার নিয়ে নেবে বুঝেছো ওই ফুটো দিয়ে তারটা ঢোকাবে দেখবে রাইট কর্নারি আটলিতে ঢুকে গেছে বা একটা পাতলা টিউব নিয়ে নেবে ফ্লেক্সিবল একটা পাতলা সরু প্লাস্টিকের টিউব নিয়ে এই অস্ট্রিয়া দিয়ে ঢুকিয়ে দিলেই হবে বুঝেছো রাইট কর্নারি আটলি ট্রাঙ্কের ভেতরে এইটার ভেতরে ঢুকে যাবে এই যে এইখানে ঢুকে যাবে ियम सब समय मरार डाक्त संगे एक पार्थक्य रेखे चले जैंत मानुषे डाक्त मे रखे मरार डाक्त नाम क्यों दिए মরার ডাক্তারকে পড়াতে হয় ফার্স্ট ইয়ারের ছেলেদের ঠিক আছে ফার্স্ট ইয়ারের ছেলেকে যখন পড়াতে হয় তখন তাকে এই পজিশন অনুযায়ী নাম বলতে হয় কিন্তু ফার্স্ট ইয়ার থেকে নেক্সট পরীক্ষা দিয়ে যখন ডাক্তার হয়ে গেল তখন ম্যাচিওর তখন তার কাছে এটিক সাইনাস করোনারি সাইনাস ইত্যাদি ব্যাপারগুলো অনেক ক্লিয়ার হয়ে যায় কাজী ক্লিনিশিয়ানস ওরা কিরকম নাম দিয়েছে বলতো আমরা কি নাম দিলাম আমরা নাম দিলাম এই জায়গাটার ियर to make a difference with us morar data amake sob clinician sa bole shobai amake chine bole shobonda apni keno ei rokom koren nijeke morar doctor apni eto bhalo poran apni jani emni bolchi ora amake jani ta bolche apni bhalo poran apni to doctor keno apni morar doctor bole amra amar shonge tomader eta mane ki bolbo eta gulf ache difference kaji ami amar status jani In our society, क्लिनिशियान नाम they will simply call it as the left coronary sinus thik ache left coronary sinus they know cardiologist dm koreche to mbbs md tar pore dm ot to jana ache je left coronary artery arises from one of the posterior aortic sinuses kaji o ki bolche tar naam simply left coronary sinus eta ke bolche left coronary sinus
দিদি বলে না আমরা ওরা দিদি মোদি বুঝেছ সব জায়গায় এই ডিফারেন্স আছে তুমি জানবে আমাদের সোসাইটিতেও আছে ডাক্তার সোসাইটিতে আমরা বলি রাইট পোস্টিরিয়ার এটিক সাইনাস ওরা কি করছে দে মেক ইট সিম্পল ওরা সবসময় সিম্পলিফাইড কারণ ওরা তো উঁচু লেভেলে আছে ও তো তোমার মতো এই লেভেলেকে পড়াচ্ছে না আরে ডিএম ডাক্তারবাবু সে তো এমডি কে পড়ায় তোমার মতো এই লেভেলে বাচ্চাকে তো পড়ায় না কাজে সে বুঝে যায় বুঝেছো তারা বুঝে যায় কাজে এটার নাম হচ্ছে রাইট পোস্টিরিয়ার এটিক সাইনাসের নাম হচ্ছে কোনো করোনারি অটেনি ওইজিন নেই তো বাস নন করোনারি সাইনাস সিম্পল তাহলে ফর দ্য ক্রিনিশিয়ান্স অ্যাট দ্য রুট অফ দ্য এটা দেয়ার আর থ্রি করোনারি সাইনাসেস টু আর মেন্ট ফর গিভিং অরিজিন টু দ্য করোনারি আর্টারিস দ্য রাইট ওয়ান ফর দ্য রাইট রাইট ওয়ান ইজ প্লেসড অ্যান্টিরিয়ার দ্য লেফট ওয়ান লেফট করোনারি সাইনাস ইজ মেন্ট ফর দ্য অরিজিন অফ লেফট করোনারি আর্টারি ইট লাইজ পোস্টিরিয়ারলি অ্যাট দ্য রুট অফ দ্য এটা and there is another coronary sinus which doesn't give origin to either of the coronary arteries hoye gelo tale tumi porikkhay ki bolbo tumi to bhai monar doctor der kache porikkha debe kaji don't say that clinician storm fast tumi age anatomist der santushto korte hobe kaji amra ja bori oi je ami bolechi pda কখনো প্রথমে পিডিএ বলবে না পোস্টিরিয়ার ইন্টারভেন্ট্রিকুলার আর্টারি স্যার ঠিক আছে ডু ইউ নো ইটস ক্লিনিক্যাল নেম অর দ্য নেম ইউজ ক্লিনিক্যালি ইয়েস স্যার ইট ইস পোস্টিরিয়ার ডিসেন্ডিং আর্টারি ডোন্ট সে দ্য ক্লিনিশিয়ান স্টাম ফার্স্ট তার কারণ তুমি যখন অ্যানাটমি পরীক্ষা দিচ্ছ ঠিক আছে ইউ আর ইন ফ্রান্ট অফ দ্য মরার ডাক্তার্স বুঝেছ কাজেই আমাদের টার্ম তোমাকে বলতে হবে তারপরে তুমি ওইগুলো বলবে ঠিক আছে তো যেহেতু এই সাবজেক্টটা ভীষণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট ক্লিনিক্যালি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ওই জন্য আমি তোমাকে ক্লিনিক্যাল টার্মগুলো বলে দিচ্ছি আচ্ছা তাহলে আমরা ওরিজিন কোথায় আমরা ওরিজিনটা খুঁজব তাহলে আজকে দায়িত্ব কি আজকে দায়িত্ব হচ্ছে স্যারেদেরকে বলে করোনারি আর্টারির অস্টিয়ামটা দেখা এবং স্যারেদের কাছে কিন্তু এসব থাকবে না স্যারেদের দায় পড়েছে আমার কি দায় পড়েছে পরের দিন আমি তো জানি আমি তোমাকে বলবো তোমাদের বেশ কিছু ছেলে তোমাদের কাছে যেন ফ্লেক্সিবল সরু ওয়্যার থাকে নিয়ে যাবে ঘর থেকে হোস্টেল থেকে কারণ তুমি আমার ডিপার্টমেন্টে খুঁজে পাবে না সুরেশকে দেবে সুরেশ তো নন মেডিক্যাল একটা লোক সুরেশ তোমাকে একটা ছুঁচো ওয়্যার দিয়ে দেবে তুমি ফুটো করে দেবে এ ওটার ওয়াল বুঝেছ ওরকম না হলো ফ্লেক্সিবল প্লাস্টিক টিউব তুমি নিয়ে নেবে বুঝেছ খুব ভালো হয় তোমার হাসপাতাল তো এখনো সেরকম জমেনি আমি এই হার্টের ওপর আমার এমবি থিসিস করেছিলাম ইন্টারভেন্ট্রিকুলার সেপ্টামের ব্লাড সাপ্লাই দেখানো আমি মর থেকে হার্ট নিতাম নিয়ে করেছি আমি কি দিতাম জানো স্ক্যাল ভেন মিডল অ্যান্ড ইট সেট বলে পেডিয়াট্রিক মেডিসিনে থাকে বাচ্চাদের যখন আমরা ইনফিউশন দিই বা ট্রান্সফিউশন করি বাচ্চাদের ভেনগুলো তো খুব সরু সেই জন্য আমাদের অন্যরকম ক্যাথেটার লাগে বুঝেছ তুমি আমাদের যে কি বলে অ্যাডাল্টদের আমাদের যেরকম ইনফিউশন সেট পাবে ব্লাড বা স্যালাইন চালাবার জন্য বাচ্চাদের অন্যরকম তো সেই স্ক্যাল ব্রেন সেটের যে এটা আছে টিউবটা খুব সরু ওইটা দিব দি করোনারি আঠের ভেতরে ঢুকে আমি ওইটা ঢুকিয়ে দিতাম প্রথমে আর্ট এনে আমাকে অনেক কিছু করতে হতো যাই হোক সেসব বাদ দাও দিয়ে তারপরে মাইক্রোফাইন বেরিয়াম সালফেট ওষুধের দোকানে পাওয়া যায় মাইক্রোবার আমি ইনজেক্ট করতাম তারপরে এক্সরে করতাম বুঝেছ তাহলে এমন কিছু কঠিন না তাহলে নিয়ে যাবে কিন্তু কারণ স্যারেরা খুঁজে পাবে না আর সুরেশকে বললে চট জলদি সুরেশের পক্ষে দেওয়া সম্ভব না দেখবে আজকে গিয়ে এটা ভীষণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট আচ্ছা তাহলে করোনারি আর্টারি ওরিজিন আমরা দেখ মাইনর ব্রাঞ্চেস আছে কারণ আমরা কি বলছি রাইট রাইট মেন করোনারি আর্টারি রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি এতটা লম্বা একটা সফর করছে ইট ইজ ট্রাভেলিং 
so long a course along the surface of the heart where does it lie it lies in the coronary sulcus bujhecho dekho tale prottekta coronary artery ke protect korbar jonno nature heart surface e groove kore diyeche ebong sei groove er opore ki rekheche sab epicardial fat groove gulo dhaga pore geche tumi kintu groove dekhte pabe na sir era tomake bolbe je this is the atrioventricular groove ki sir bolchi groove kothay groove to nai ki ache fat tale unless you remove the fat unless you remove the vessels lodged in the groove you cannot identify or appreciate the presence of a groove but in all the human hearts cadaveric human hearts the position of the grooves are marked by sub epicardial fat plus in some of the grooves you will find segments of the arteries or the veins lodged in the grooves peeping uki niche tumi dekhte pabo segments not the entire artery kintu part bujhecho fat ke shoriye tumake dekha dicche kothay specially dekha jay posterior interventricular groove posterior interventricular groove tumi vein ba artery dekhte pabe bujhecho anterior interventricular groove chot kore dekha jay na fat thake coronary sulcus e fat thake thik ache fat ta ke shoriye dite hoy epicardium ebong fat ta ke ekটু dissect korte hoy korle beri ashe artery tale right coronary artery trunk parent trunk lies in the coronary sulcus or atrioventricular groove where lies the circumflex artery circumflex branch of the left coronary artery it also lies tale coronary sulcus ta ki rokom it is like a ring around the heart coronary sulcus is like a ring around the heart is it a complete ring no complete ring kintu noy in the upper part the ring is deficient tale coronary sulcus how does it look like it looks like more or less the english letter c ami doy dekhi dichi the coronary sulcus will be looking like it will be looking like this circumflex branch of left coronary artery thik ache tale coronary sulcus it is a groove between the ventricles and the atria taule er ekta right part ache right atrium right ventricle ekta left part ache left atrium left ventricle ei hocche coronary sulcus interventricular arteries they will be lodged in the interventricular grooves thik ache interventricular group one is position in the sternocostal surface anteriorly anterior interventricular group home for the lad ঠিক আছে অর অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ইন্টারভেন্টিকুলার রেমাস অফ লেফট মেন করোনারি আর্টারি এন্ড এ পোস্টিরিয়ার ইন্টারভেন্টিকুলার গ্রুপ দ্যাট গ্রুপ ইজ হোম ফর টু ভেসেলস এ ভেসেল ডিরাইভ ফ্রম দা রাইট করোনারি আর্টারি ইউজুয়ালি পিডিএ এন্ড দা কন্টিনিউয়েশন অফ এলডি এই যে এলডি এর কন্টিনিউয়েশন আছে এলডি এর কন্টিনিউয়েশন আছে এই জায়গাটা কি ভীষণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট জায়গা হার্ট এ এপেক্স তাহলে দেখো এলডি হচ্ছে কোথা দিয়ে এইখান দিয়ে আমি সার্ভিসে দেখাইনি এটাকে এরকম করে দেওয়া উচিত এইখানে একটা নচ থাকে নচ নচ এই নচ দিয়ে ভরে এই নচটার নাম হচ্ছে ইনসিসুরা এপিসিস কডিস ইনসিসুরা এপিসিস কডিস বুঝেছ ইনসিসুরা हार्ट एराउंड 
ঠিক আছে লাস্ট সেগমেন্ট ডিসটাল মোস্ট সেগমেন্ট অফ এলইডি উইল বি লাইং ইন দা পোস্টেরিয়র ইন্টারভেন্ট্রিকুলার গ্রুপ বুঝেছো দিস ওয়াজ গিভেন ইন एग्जामिनेशंस লাইক সেগমেন্টস অফ দা ফ্যালোপিয়ান টিউব স্টার্টিং মিডিয়াল টু ল্যাটারাল ইন সিকোয়েন্স ইউ হ্যাভ টু রাইট ইট ইউটেরাইন ইন ইথমাস দেন হ্যাম্পলা and this inferred dibulum ampulla is the most important part widest part and this most thick part which is present and the site of fertilization which takes place uh, and this particular uh, like a fallopian tube have got blood supply which is important source two arteries which is supplying so one is like uh, the ovarian artery which is giving the branch to it and the uterine artery which is supplying as well to to reinforce this so if you have a fallopian tube which is receiving two blood sources uterine artery and the ovarian artery so if you have to do the surgery which sir was referring to tubectomy or any kind of like a removal of this tube you have to block these two arteries or else it will keep on bleeding so whenever you are talking about this particular like uh, the gross features of the fallopian tube we have to need to talk about that moreover it has a covering over there which is known as mesosalpings which is a broad ligament fold which is covering to it uh, within this mesosalpings there are kind of sub segments are there like a mes ovarium mesosalpings meso metrium etc etc these are the parts of the broad ligament which is also important short note which is for your gross understanding but anyways so coming for the microstructures of this particular tube so unlike any tube which you have in the gi system which has got four layers outside inside we have talked about serous mucus submucus etc et and muscular layer in between which is placed this particular tube also a tube structure but it is a kind of related to this uterine or the reproductive system this had got three layers so most inside we have this layer which is like a inner mucosa then we do not have a submucous layer so straight away this like a epithelium with this lamina propria which is consisting of this particular mucous layer is resting on the muscle layer so this muscle layer is quite extensive in this layer why this particular thing goes on like a peristalsis to just like uh, move this particular fertilized product or this ovum through or the sperm to it so this particular muscular actions of this particular tube which is required to be very strong so that propulsion actions gives a strong muscular base to this particular system so we get a muscle core we get like uh, the epithelium or cellular core and under to it we have the lamina propria which is there and then we have this outer layer which is covering to it serous layer which is present so we have that histologically we see that this particular tube have got three layers whenever you are seeing it so inside out we have three layers mucous layer muscle layer and the serous layer now if you talk about the mucous layer which is the epithelium layer so this particular epithelium which is present over here is the cells which is having a special power which is moving so this particular movement requires some kind of beating and this particular beating goes on synchronized way so this particular cells which is present on here have got cilia or projections so cilia cellular projections are there so this particular cells which is present in this particular mucus layer is a simple ciliated columnar epithelium these are the prime cells which are present in it there are some cells which are non ciliated cell they are support cell we call them as pig cell pg cells they are present plentifully in the other parts as well so non ciliated cell which are support cell they are like less than 1% con constituting of predominantly it's a kind of columnar kind of cells as ciliated columnar kind of cells are present over there why this cilia is present because of this particular cilia we get a actions which is kind of like a getting a kind of movement for drawing or or, or pulling this particular ovum fertilized ovum or sperms into the proper directions whenever it is required so this particular layer which is mucosa out here goes in several foldings now why this foldings is required to be as you can see the fertilization taking place day 1 for example and this implantation is taking place day 6 so between 0 to day 6 we need nutrition for this fertilized product now within this time this is migrating from this fallopian tube which is ampulla to this particular product implantation side which is the uterus during this particular region it don't have any blood supply it don't have any source of food so where from they get the food or source of this blood uh, source for this nutrition this particular epithelium which is a lining epithelium within this particular layers of this fallopian tube go goes on several folding and this particular mucosal folding which is there which looks like a fern pattern looks like a fern which is going on that's like a vegetable fern so this particular epithelium goes on tremendous duplication 
with this duplication what we are achieving here we get an extra surface area and through the surface area these peg cells and this particular support cells they secrete some kind of fluids through the fluids the food material are given to that fertilized ovum which is transmitting from day 1 to day 6 so whenever it is passing through this particular ciliated folding epithelium it gets this nutrition through this passive process we call them as diffusion so this is getting the nutrition till it gets planted once it gets planted it is piercing this muscle layer of this uterus and it will be getting the blood supply right so it is burrowing there before that time it is not having any attachment it is still venturing moving rolling down so that particular epithelium which is like super coiled have got several folds in it giving this nutrition supply along with it this particular mucosal longitudinal fold thin longitudinal folds which i am referring to is more plentifully present towards this abdominal end and less on this uterine end that's what i'm talking about this particular fallopian tube so we have this particular fallopian tube muscular tube which is uh, this this so this is abdominal end this is the uterine end so this particular folding are plentifully present from the abdominal end to this isthmus to the uh, ampulla to this isthmus more nearly it closes to this uterine end this folding of this epithelium glows down resulting in it should be pro projected towards downwards to this particular cavity of the uterus where it can be planted so this region we need an accelerated kind of movement till it gets projected and planted over this particular point now coming to this particular points where we have started about this particular mucosa which is kind of like a ciliated columnar epithelium we understand why the use of cilia is there what are the support cells which is there which is secreting this fluid which is nourishing this spermatozoa or fertilized egg that's what we are referring here so these particular cells have got two different functions which is there and we can identify and mention about why there are two different types of cells are there and what is the functional of that coming to the muscle layer we mentioned about this particular thing needs a lot of peristalsis so we need a strong muscle base to to have over here through this particular muscle these particular muscles are smooth muscles and they are having two layers inner circular outer longitudinal they are like the same and then this particular thing having an outer layer which is serous layer peritoneal layer which is wrapped up by this particular covering that we mentioned mesosalpinx which is the broad ligament which is connective tissue and which is lined by a cell which is known as mesothelium which is lining over there so mesothelium which is a peritoneal cells which is lining this particular serous layer now histologically once you see this particular thing this particular thing which looks like this in a in a schematic pictures so you see that so outside inside we have this outer layer which is serous then we have the muscle layer which is having circular and longitudinal outer long inner circular and outer longitudinal those two layer and this thing which you are seeing here is entire thing is the epithelium the epithelium which is consisting of two elements one is the cells what kind of cells there are two types of cells ciliated columnar kind of epithelium and peg cells which is support cells now this particular epithelium it goes on several duplication and ramifications and then we have this particular under cells or lamina propria which is present inside to this particular epithelium layer so this is what you were saying here this duplications of the epithelium which you seeing here it looks like a fern pattern or finger like projections towards it through this particular cavity this is the end where you see the cavity of this lumen of this particular fallopian tube the ovum or fertilized ovum passes through this particular mess of this finger like projections as it moves over here it gets the nutrition from this particular secretory elements of the cells within this particular epithelium or mucous layer of this fallopian tube now if you zoom this or 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 amplify this particular epithelium this thing looks like this so ciliated columnar epithelium tall cells are there which is present over there so which is projecting towards this particular cavity end and some of them which is placed inside in between this which is not that's like a ciliated cell truncated and it is looking like a triangular shaped cells these are the cells which is present over here we call them as peg cells also known as secretory cells functions of the secretory cells to give the nourishments to the fertilized ovum which is passing through or the ovum or this particular sperm which is traveling through this tract now how this particular thing looks like in a in a histological picture this is how it looks like in a histological picture that's a real picture what you are going to see so outside inside you have to see this lumen side you have to identify first then you see this 
projections which is looking like finger like projections we call this firm pattern so this is having a epithelium duplications which is lying over there this particular epithelium cells we cannot see it properly because it's not zoomed if you highlight it then you will see like it is a ciliated columnar kind of epithelium which is present in here so this particular thing is epithelium inside to it we have the lamina propria which is extending on then we have the muscle coat which is quite thick and we have this particular next we have this particular layer which is an outside serous layer so in between this particular epithelium and the muscle we do not have any intervening region which is known as submucosa in case of this particular gi system we see the submucosa fitted with the glands everything which is present blood vessels tons of them here we see this blood vessels ending on this muscle layer and only just like few capillaries are extending towards this particular epithelium and nothing beyond this particular base region and everything beyond is taken care by this particular the epithelium cells so this is a cross sectional picture of this particular uterine or fallopian tube so in short or in a tabular form if you just like are going to identify them it is a fallian features which you are going to identify so it has a mucus layer it has a muscle coat and it has a serous coat and the mucus have got two element which is cells and the lamina propria cells there are two types ciliated columnar kind of epithelium and simple peg cells which is columnar type of cells a little bit truncated non ciliated they have the different functions muscle coat non ciliated most of the times in between the placed in between them of course they have to be placed on the same layers they are kind of like a, all the cells they are single layer we call them a simple columnar epithelium peg cells are not ciliated it's truncated on the top and it is triangular more or less shaped but it's still like a modifications of this particular columnar cells but they do not have cilia so non ciliated and ciliated both of the cells muscle coat they have the two layers reasons of this strong muscle coat we identify it and serous layer which has got mesothelium layer almost outside which is present on this and mucus shows numerous longitudinal folds which is point of identifications which you are going to identify whenever you are going to see this so in a histological feature this particular element you are going to see this is a schematic picture and this is a real picture this is how we are going to identify we have a specimen picture which resembles more or less the same like uh, whatever you have seen this particular finger like projection is a hallmark to identify this particular specimen as a identifying point coming to the other organs which is known as the uterus we know this particular uterus the gross features body fundus cervix and this particular uterus we give this particular uterus in a small way to understand this uterus whenever you are identifying it histologically we call them as fibro musculo glandular organ what kind of organ it is fibro musculo glandular if you split that that means we are going to see some fibers we are going to see some muscles and we are going to see some glands which are present in this particular organs so these organs uterus is a fibro musculo glandular organs now beside that we have some parts of this particular uterus mostly we pick up this particular histological specimen which is coming from the uterus fundus or body region cervix we do not pick up normally so fundus and the body from where the uterine specimen we usually pick it up now whenever you are seeing this particular uterus you may not be seeing the entire layers or entire thing because we will be going uh, going to give you a short uh, a short area to identify or short cross section area of the uterus to identify now from inside outside ut uterus have got three layers just like the fallopian tube most inside layer we call them as endometrium then we have the muscle layer myometrium then we have this perimetrium so within this particular layers endometrium myometrium and perimetrium there is the existence of these three elements fibro musculo glandular organs right so we are going to see some fibers which is present within it they are going to see some muscles which is going to be present as a as a structure as well which is a muscular organ and glands as well which is present predominantly glands which is present on this endometrium layer which is lying on this particular endometrial layer we call them as uterine glands so we'll be seeing this particular endometrium which is present inside to it so most inner layer endometrium which is having this lining epithelium so that means we have the epithelium then we have the lamina propria then we have the muscle layer then we have the outer layer which is like uh, the outer perimetrium uh, which is the outer layer so this endometrium if you take this endometrium is made of two layers one is the cells which is present on it 
and then under to this particular cells which is lying uh, lining this particular layers which is lying deep to them then we have this particular lamina propria within this lamina propria we are going to see some glands we call them as uterine glands now about this particular uterine glands we have to know a little detail about it right now to make it simple so this particular uterus have got glands we call them as uterine glands now this uterine glands depending on the phase of that particular uterus or in a hormonal cycle where this particular uterus is the shape of the gland is different so if this particular uterine in early phase of the cycle or in a periodic cycle if it is the early phase that means we have a periodic cycle starting from 0 to 28 days right so within this particular 28 days we split it in the middle which is 14 days so 0 to 14 days we call them as early phase and then we have this particular middle phase and then we have the late phase of this particular uh, uh, periodic cycle so this early phase we have this uterine gland which is a simple form now the simple glands looks like simple just like this kind of glands lined by this particular columnar to cuboidal kind of epithelium, they look like this. Now, this particular simple gland with the influence of the hormone, the estrogen and the progesterone, they become complex. We call them as coiled. So, this particular simple gland with the influence in the later phase of this cycle or of this particular uh, uterine cycle, it becomes coiled. So, this particular gland looks like this. So, we call them as spiraling of the glands. We call them as, it looks like a spiral. So, that is why you, this particular thing looks like a spiraling of the glands. And this particular gland cells and everything looks very thicker and tortuous. So, we call them as spiraling of glands. Now, within this particular lamina propria, we are talking about the endometrium layer where we are going to see this particular glands, lamina propria endometrium. Beside this particular glands, we see blood vessels. So, we have these blood vessels which is present in this particular early phase of this particular uterine endometrium is again straight. So, these particular blood vessels in the initial phase of this cycle is straight. And again, same thing happens with this particular glands when it becomes like little bit on a later phase of this cycle, again it is becoming spiral. So, this particular blood vessels and the arteries go on tortuously. So, we call them as spiraling of the blood vessels and spiraling of the glands. So, am I clear or not? So, these transformations are present. So, based on this, how you are looking into this particular glands, how the glands look like, it is a plain simple kind of gland, circular gland or longitudinal gland you are seeing or if you are seeing it is a spiral gland, Depending on, you can comment on which phase of the cycle that uterus, uterus was going on. So, if you have picked up an uterus which was in early phase of the periodic cycle and if you have sliced it, stained it, the glands which you are seeing here will be like this, straight arteries and the slate glands. If you have picked up the uterus and stained it and it will be in a later phase of the periodic cycle, the glands, the same glands will be looking like tortuous, spiraling and which will be there in the forms of the arteries, blood vessels and as well as this particular, the glands as well. So, we call them a spiraling of the glands and spiraling of these particular arteries are there by influenced by what? The hormones. What are the hormones which are influencing out here? Estrogen and progesterone. Now, once you do not have any estrogen or any progesterone, what happens to it? This particular spiraling of the arteries are cut shade and this particular spiral arteries is cut shed which were feeding this particular glands so which will also be cut shed. So, that will be shedding off. So, it happens in the menstrual period of time where this particular devoid of this particular hormone, these particular arteries die and let this particular blood vessels die, uh, let this particular glands die as well which is leading as a shedding of this particular structure of endometrium or part of the endometrium which is shedding out that leads to the menstrual phase of the life. So, if you are picking up that particular phase of this particular uterus and staring at it, you will be seeing this particular arteries which will be damaged and destroyed and no glands or no spirally is there. Even this particular basal region which will be looking thick. Now, coming about here, 
This particular endometrium, as I am mentioning, which is the innermost layer, can be divided on based on how these things are lying on. We call them as stratum. Basally, or stratum functional. So, this particular stratum basally and the stratum functional that you have to understand. So, the deepest one is stratum basally. That means deep means it is lying on the muscle coat. And this superficial layer we call them as stratum functional. This stratum functional is again subdivided into two different coats. So, if you cannot memorize all detailed complex things about here, we just like to memorize this stratum basally and stratum functional at this particular point. Now, this particular stratum basally and the functional, what is the importance of this? Importance is that the influence of the hormones, what hormones? The female hormones. What female hormones? Progesterone and estrogen. They influence the stratum functional. And this particular stratum functional grow in size and this particular coiling and super coiling of the blood vessels and the glands are visible on the functional zone, which is least affected on the stratum basally zone. Now, this particular stratum basally, which is lying at the deepest core, more or less shows the glands, which is simple form, shows the arteries, which is on the straight arteries. So, what happened if you trace these arteries, which is like uterine arteries, which is present, if it is starting from the muscle layer, if it is a muscle layer, then we have this outer serous layer, then we have the endometrium, which is like this. So, we have this stratum basally, SB, and this S functional which is lying on the top like this. So, you see that if you follow a blood vessel which is coming from this muscular coat and entering to this particular stratum basally, it was straight till it reaches to this basally and then it goes on the upper layer, it keeps on spiraling. The same artery which is spiraling reaching to this particular functional zone. So, whenever you are taking this particular specimen which you are taking it from stratum functional zone, we we'll see this particular change is happening. The basal zone of this particular endometrium does not have that much of influence of the hormonal changes which is taking place in the breast part of this particular uterus. So, this if I show that in a picture that will be more convincing for you to identify what I am trying to mention. But few parts we are familiar with fundus body and the cervix and I will mention about we are highlighting the part of the uterus which is predominantly taken in the fundus and the body region. The cervix part we are not picking up at this particular session. Now, we have three layers of the uterus inside to outside we have there. Most inside we have the lumen, then we have this endometrium layer, then we have the muscle layer, then we have this perimetrium. So, three layers just like the fallopian tube it also has. Now, we zoom this particular endometrium, we are restricting the discussion for now within this endometrium. So, what is endometrium? Inner cell layer. So, inner cell that means it has a lining cells. What kind of cells are there? We have to mention about it. Then within this particular cells, deep to that we have the lamina propria. So, that particular lamina propria we can divide into three segments. The cells which is present within this particular endometrium, we see that simple columnar kind of epithelium. So, tube cells column cells which are predominantly present over there. Then we have the connective tissue. Then within this particular endometrium, we are going to see blood vessels and the glands which are present. So, they are known as uterine glands and uterine arteries. Now, we just look talking about this particular uterine glands and uterine arteries. Now, this particular uterine glands and the uterine arteries and along with this particular endometrial layers of the cells and the connective tissues are under influence of these two hormones estrogen, progesterone, depending on the cycles of these uterine cycles we are talking about or they do not have anything. So, this particular progesterone, estrogen may be there in initial, initially it is hit by this particular estrogen, then it is progesterone which is taking care of these particular layers to grow and then everything shades off, then we have no layers of the own hormones coming there. So, we talked about this particular phases of the menstrual period or of this. Now, this particular thing we are talking about, we have this particular layers which is present within this particular endometrium. We have three layers which is present on it. So, we have this particular layers of the endometrium, we call them as stratum basali and then we have this stratum functional. So, stratum functional again divided into two zones, compactum and the spongiosum. Compactum is the most outer layer and the spongiosum is in between layer. But again, if you cannot memorize at this particular point in anatomy, we just like restrict this particular region, stratum basali and stratum functional. 
some part is functioning, some part is remaining resistant to changes. So, the basal region more or less have got this particular thing which is that glands and the blood vessels are more or less are remaining the same throughout the period of cycle. The changes which is happening within this particular endometrium is largely on the superior layer or the upper layer of this particular endometrium. So, this upper layer where the changes are predominantly seen we call them a stratum functional which is having two layers sub layers again which is in physiology we talk more in detail about. Now, within this particular stratum compactum stratum spongiosum we are going to see some of the things which is the changes which is taking place. So, within this particular layers, within this particular layers, we have this particular blood vessels and we have this particular, we have this particular blood vessels and the glands are there. Now, see that these are the things which you are mentioning over there. This particular glands we are seeing here in the simple form of the gland, which is lined by this particular columnar to cuboidal type of epithelium, which has a simple lumen, which is getting in here. This particular thing which is predominantly seen in the stratum basale or any form of this particular uterus in the early phase of the menstrual cycle. As this particular thing is influenced with the hormones which is like a estrogen and then we have the progesterone which is pitching in changing this particular glands entirely. From here you see that it is elonging, getting in bigger, getting in wider and more edema or more fluid is getting in here and which is eventually getting a spiral shaped area which is coming on to the later phase of this pregnancy, uh, sorry, later phase of the uterine cycle, which is coming on here. So, this is called spiraling of the glands. So, same thing happens with the blood vessels as well. So, in the basal region, we have this particular arteries, which is straighter. That same artery becomes a tortuous course with the influence of this hormone as these things courses with this further phase of the menstrual cycle. So, this particular thing you are seeing here premenstrual period, uh, postmenstrual, just immediately after postmenstrual, where we have this least influence of the hormones. Then we have the proliferative phase, next phase, which is coming. Then we have the secretory phase, which is going on. And then we have the menstrual phase, which is shed shedding off. So, this is how this uterine cycle texting off the from the beginning to this late phase. So, this endometrium is under influence of these particular hormones. Initially, we call them as proliferative phase, which is influenced by this estrogen. So, this is an exam question. They, they ask about in this particular proliferative phase, which particular hormone influences in the, to bring the changes within this particular endometrium. Next phase, which is coming from this particular proliferative phase, we go to the secretory phase, which is further advanced variety, further tortuosity coming so on, which is influenced by the progesterone. We have both of them, estrogen there, progesterone there, but the predominantly it is taken care by this progesterone. Then we have this, none of the hormones is coming over here. If the pregnancy is not happening, then we have this particular ovulation shape. Then we have this particular no pregnancy there. This hormones drops down and this particular hormone, which is dropping down, leading to this particular phase, which is known as menstrual phase. When all these things loses this particular uh, tortuosity and this particular uh, glands, everything is coming out. We call them as menstrual phase or menstrual phase of this particular thing. Now, this particular changes which is taking place, we call them as endometrial change, is taking place on these layers of this endometrium which is taking or lying on the upper layers of this particular endometrium. We call them as stratum functional, that is what we mentioned about. So, you see this histological picture with the, on the right side and this is on the left side. And now, you can see this particular girth and the dimensions. So, this is the muscle layer which you are seeing here. Then we have this particular endometrium. So, this particular endometrium on top we have the lining cells or epithelium which is lined over here simple columnar kind of epithelium. Then we have the lamina propria. What the lamina propria is housed with? We have the glands, we have the blood vessels. How do the blood vessels look like? Simple, does not have much of length. And how do the glands look like? Looks like a worms and different shapes are there. Elongated little bit or maybe just like have a circular fashion. Now, these glands are known as uterine glands. Now, this particular thing which you are seeing here in this particular early phase or post menstrual phase. Now, see that this particular same endometrium goes on transformation into this particular picture. So, this is a secretory phase that means close to this particular phase which is 14 days around where this particular phase of this particular secretion which is an, at, the, at, at the most. You see that this is the epithelium which is lying over here. 
and then we have the lamina propria. Now this, this word or this particular thickness was there from the endometrium. So see the thickness over there, it is how elongated and how big it is. Now what this particular thing is occupied with? The same glands and the same arteries. Now see the length and this particular arteries of the gland nature, they have got immense complex things which has developed. It was simple, tube-like or kind of like worm-like look. Now you see that it is spiraling and having kind of tortuous, it is swollen and distended over there. And this particular arteries which is also running a course which is thicker, bigger and maybe just like a running a spiraling course as well. You see this particular artery which is running over there is a longitudinal sections which is going up from, from here is moving up. So this is the area of this particular endometrium, we call them a stratum functionnel which is changing with these hormones. So this area which is lying on top of this particular muscle layer, we call the mastitum basali. So this particular layer does not have much changes only this particular region as well. So this is have got little bit change but compared to this change with this change it does not much of difference which you are seeing here. So this differences based on this particular differences of the, of the glandular nature or the cellularity nature, we can comment on which phase of this periodic cycle this particular uterus is of. Either it is a premenstrual or it is a follicular phase or secretory phase depending on this tortuosity what you are seeing here. And muscle layers which you are seeing here which is present at the base layer. So we have the longitudinal muscle which is present outer longitudinal and inner longitudinal they are present and in between them we have irregularly placed muscles are there. So they are directed in the different directions. So longitudinal muscles are there throughout this particular length of this particular layer of this particular muscle uh, of this particular uh, organ which is known as myometrium layer and then we have the outermost layer which is present in here. So this is a real picture of the histological slides which you are seeing here. So this is the lumen side, this is the epithelium, this is the lamina propria which you are seeing here, then we have the muscle layer toning down there. So this is in early phase of the menstruation where you see the glands are pretty much straight, everything is more or less straight which you are seeing here and a simple form the glands are there and compared to here it looks like everything is coiled and kinky. So this is a later phase of the circulation and this part which you are seeing here is a stratum functionnel and this is what you are seeing here uterine glands. So these are where the glands and these were the glands in the different phase of the cycle, thicker, bigger, tortuous compared to this one. So this is a later phase of the periodic cycle, this is an early phase of the periodic cycle that what you can just like carry it from here. So hormonal influence how they are coming over here in the first phase which hormone is pitching in to make the changes. In the second phase of this particular uterine cycle what hormone is taking place and the menstrual phase where you do not have any hormone, everything is shades off, this is important for us to understand. The glands and the arteries which goes on like a remarkable changes into here which is known as this particular uterine glands and the arteries, the arteries which is going on changes we call them a spiraling of the gland and spiraling of the arteries, we call them a spiral arteries and the spiral gland which is present seen in the later phase or secretory phase of this thing. And to, in short, we have these three layers of this uterus, which you are seeing histologically. Endometrium, innermost, which is divided into two layers, stratum basali, which is a basal layer, least changes, functional, which is lying on the top, which can be divided into two subsegments. I am not going into it. So basali and functional, if you are good with that, we are happy with that. Within this layer, we are going to see the arteries, we are going to see the muscle uh, glands. What glands? Uterine glands. The uterine glands and the arteries goes on further duplication, further changes which is known as spiraling with the influence of the hormone in later phase and we have seen that how things are going on. The muscle layers which is predominant longitudinal layer and middle layer which is a bizarre cell layer so which is present or, or in short muscle layers which is present in the myometrium layer. Then we have the outer layer which is perimetrium most outside which is made of the connective tissue, vascular tissue which is blending over there. So this is how this uterine specimen looks like and this is the hormonal changes within this particular endometrium taking place, phase 1 estrogen then progesterone and no hormone depending on how these things are going in. Now whenever the menstrual period is going on that means the arteries are losing the blood flow, the glands are losing the nutrition. As a result of that everything whatever it has grown from the basally to this particular functional will be the functional layer will be shed off. So that is what it is coming as menstrual blood, the cells the glands everything is shumming, coming out as a debris with the mixed up in the blood. We call that as a menstrual blood. So which is because of the no hormones is there. Within this particular layer when this particular shading of this going on it is taking place only in this particular stratum 
functional. The basal region of this uterus remains intact because that much of influence on the hormones we mentioned that is not taking place. So, arteries which was there in the stratum basale were remain there. So, again, again the next cycle comes, again the estrogen comes, again the progesterone comes, the same growth of this particular endometrial functional layer again coming back. So, this is how the cyclical change within this particular endometrium taking place. So, this is what we have to carry, identify in this particular specimen. So, this is the specimen what you are going to see in the cross section. So, we have given mounted two of them, one is a fallopian tube or uterine tube, you have to identify that based on this finger like pattern which is present in the endometrium layer and this particular thing we are going to identify the endometrium and this particular myometrium in between we have this lamina propria which is having this particular glands and the blood vessels which is present on it. Here we see that in a uterus which is given over here is predominantly giving a picture like this one. So, it is an early phase of this periodic cycle where from this particular uterus is of the glands and the arteries within this particular lamina propria similar to this particular picture which you are seeing here. This particular secretory phase or proliferative phase which is predominantly seen in case of the influence of the hormones is not here with us for now. Later on we can project some of them. At least you identify the two basic slides. This one uterus with this particular changes which is going to happen and this fallopian tube which is like this. What is the function? It pumps out the blood and it sends the blood to the system, to the different system like it can go up upwards. This is the left common carotid, it can go to the left, this is the left subclavian. So, it will reach the upper extremity. Similarly, it, it will again break up into two branches and it will supply accordingly and another one is coming down, it will supply the lower extremity, the abdomen and everything. Okay. So, this left ventricle will pump out and it will pass through the this artery that is the aorta and it will reach the circul circulation and it will reach the, the system. So, within the system brother, what do you think that blood will remain forever? Once it has been pumped out and it will remain there, no, definitely not, it will come down from above and from the below, above the diaphragm and the, from the below the diaphragm, it will come down and will reach the right heart, that means within the right atrium through superior vena cava from the upper part of the body and we have seen the inferior vena cava that is the from the lower part of the body and abdomen below the diaphragm and it will reach the right heart and more specifically the right atrium. Then it, it will come through an opening in between the right atrium and right ventricle, that is the atriovenous opening and it will reach the right ventricle and ultimately that will get, will get pumped out and it will reach to the respective lung, one towards the right lung and one towards the left lung, okay. So, this is the pulmonary bay or pulmonary artery and this truncated area is called the infundibulum of the pulmonary trunk. So, it will reach to the lung. Why? Because 
this venous blood is poor in oxygen content whereas the arterial blood is rich in oxygen content so it needs again purification or it needs oxygenation so then it will come from the respective lung this is the the if we reverse the the heart we can see the posterior aspect and this is the area which is the left atrium where this pulmonary veins will enter and it will enter into the left atrium and then it will go to the left ventricle or this one this is left ventricle this is left ventricle this is right atrium and right ventricle so this is the circulation this is continuously going on from the the embryonic period that means during the genesis of the heart it it is formed from two parallel tubes which is called the heart tubes which two tubes get fused and ultimately we get the heart tube and this heart tube ultimately forms this right atrium right ventricle left ventricle and left atrium all these things okay so this will go this will start around, around 21 days of the intrauterine life and it will end till our last breath so this heart is continuously pumping without any fatigue the muscles the cardiac muscles they never get fatigued why due to the at the same time the isoma the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme that is especially the special varieties as a mb bb there are several varieties mm bb mb so these are several varieties okay it is the bb is present in the brain mm is present in the muscles and mb variety is a present in our heart so that is the peculiarity peculiarity of that lactate dehydrogenase enzyme that's why it will not get fatigued now about the position where is it located what located in the abdomen located in the thorax located in the brain within the cranial cavity at least within the thorax in embryonic stage it is present at the head region and ultimately during the folding of the embryo it comes down and ultimately it reaches the whole thing the septum transversum and everything they comes down they actually they were initially located within the head and neck region it comes down and ultimately it, it is what is the position it is within the mediastinum we know the mediastinum means in between the two uh, mediastinal pleura there is a space which is called the mediastinum which is divided into the anterior which is divided into primarily into superior and inferior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum is again divided into anterior middle and posterior the heart itself with its pericardial covering it remains within the middle mediastinum so heart has got an covering one outside covering that is the fibrous one and inside one is serous again that serous actually it develops within a balloon the serous is nothing it's a balloon within the balloon serous pericardium is nothing a bladder like and the heart projects inside it so ultimately that has a what also 
the visceral layer and the parietal layer that you know I think already there is a serous pericardium. Now about the heart, what is the size? Size is just like its own fist, just like its own fist. Tomar jatotu yi mushti, tatotu kuri tar size. Okay. Now it has got one apex. Okay. One apex and just opposite to that on the posterior aspect we get an area which is called the base. This is the apex and this is the base. This is the apex and just behind of it we will get the base and this is the base which is actually formed mainly by the left atrium and also a part by the right atrium that is the base. Do not think that inferior surface is the base. Inferior surface which this is the inferior surface or this is the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface that surface actually rests on the mainly on the central tendon of that diaphragm. Okay. So, this is apex and this is base. And what is the location of the apex? It is in the fifth intercostal space, 9 centimeter away from the midline, just medial to the general, it is a rough idea, it is medial to the nipple. That is the apex of the heart. Now, what is apex bit? If we put our palm over the over the apex of the heart, just medial to the apex, we will feel a thrill or bit in our hand. We can feel, especially in and it is augmented in valvular heart diseases where we can feel it. That is the apex bit. And this apex bit is a bit medial to the anatomical apex. And another is clinical apex. It is the second intercostal space, left second intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum. That is the clinical apex. So, one is apex that is the anatomical apex, another is the apex bit and third one is clinical apex. I, we act, actually with the stethoscope, we just auscultate over this a, area to get the, the sound or the second heart sound properly. Okay. Now about From apex to base, from apex to base is around 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter. 12 centimeter. 12 millimeter. Centimeter kotuku. Edugu, Edugu, Atugu, Atugu, two point five four centimeter makes one inches. That is the Dutu Agul Jadi Hai, breath high. So this becomes two point five centimeters. So, like that, you can have an idea twelve centimeter. And maximum breadth is around 9 centimeter and anterior to posterior is around 6 centimeter. Forget it. All these dimensions you may, you may forget at this stage. 
Now, how many chambers are there? You must say there are four chambers right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. That much. From right to right ventricle, there is one opening, atriovenous, uh, uh, ventricular opening, atrioventricular opening. That is where we can get a tricuspid valve. From right ventricle to the pulmonary aorta, pulmonary trunk or bay, we are getting another, and also we will get another valve. They are similar, they are semilunar, uh, semilunar valves. Okay. And another valve we will get from the left atrium to right ventricle, which has got two cars, which is the mitral valve. Here we are getting the valve which, which has got three cars, tricuspid valve. Okay. Now about the borders. One border you can see on the right side which connects the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, that is the right border. Similarly, on the left side, we are getting a left border and this left border is, we can see it is contributed by the left ventricle and also a, we can see a corrugated structure just above the left ventricle, this is the left auricle. So, Left border is contributed by left ventricle and also the left auricle. One can, you can see one border this, which is called the inferior border. And another border sometimes we can, we, in, in some book it is written, this is the upper border connecting the the right and left auricles. This is the upper border. So, right border, left border, inferior border and the upper border. So, of the surfaces. The surface we can see from the front which is definitely the anterior surface and it is in relation to the sternum and the ribs. So, that surface is called the sternocostal surface. And we know in front of which we get the anterior margin of the lung actually overlaps over this surface. On the right side, sharp anterior border of the lung, you have already seen the, uh, the vision of the lung, this, the sharp anterior border of the right lung. Uh, and on the left side, there is a cardiac notch in the left lung due to the bulging effect of this left ventricle and or the right ventricles. So, there is a bulging area of the bulging area and which causes a notch in the lung, anterior border of the lung. So, a part of, part of the anterior surface of the sternocostal surface is directly in relation to the sternum and the costae or the ribs. In that area, if we percuss over the lung, we get a different tone over a, a because lung contains air. So, over this area, if we percuss, this is a percussion, we will get a tympanitic sound, alveolar. And over this area where there is blood, 
we will get a dull sound the sound will change so that area is called area of superficial cardiac dullness repeat korbo repeat koribo over the long we will if we parkas we will get a a particular tone if there is an air it will be resonating sound but over this area we i have told a part of the heart is is in direct contact with the anterior chest wall where we if we make a percussion we if we make we if we make a percussion we will get a dull sound so that is called the area of the superficial cardiac dullness and this turnocostal surface you can see it is contributed mainly by the right ventricle and also a co small contribution from the right atrium and left ventricle what is the contribution between the right ventricle and left ventricle right ventricle if it is the contribution is two the right uh, uh, and left ventricle contributes only one part one part so two is to one part okay so the within the sternocostal surface in front of the sternocostal surface we are, we will get the lung and in front of the lung we will get the anterior chest wall then the intercostal space and the contents of the intercostal space and more in front we will have the muscle that important muscle that is the pectoralis major and superficial to that pectoralis major we will get deep fossa then we will get the superficial fossa then skin from above so this sternocostal surface is related to skin superficial fossa deep fossa or pectoral fossa pectoralis major muscle intercostal space with its contents then over the area of the superficial cardiac dullness it is directly in contact with the chest wall where we will get it is covered by the pericardium okay and there are two ligaments from pericardium to the anterior chest wall superior and inferior ligaments start from the sternum to the pericardium so superior and inferior sterno pericardial ligaments then we will get the pericardium then we will get the sternocostal surface so another importance of this area which is in contact with the the chest wall on emergency we can reach to the heart suppose a patient is collapsing collapsed patient so intra cardiac injection is needed immediate intra cardiac adrenaline injection is needed so we can directly put through this area especially the left costo sternal junction is very important through which if we insert a needle it will certainly reach the left heart nicely now on the right side we are getting another surface 
that is the right surface similarly on the left side we will get another surface that is the left surface and if we rotate it we can see the inferior surface which rests on the inferior surface rests on the diaphragm mainly over the central tendon of the diaphragm and below the, the, the diaphragm what we will get the peritoneum and on the right side we will get the liver on the left side we will get the fundus of the stomach okay so this is the inferior surface so sternocostal surface inferior surface or diaphragmatic surface right surface left surface and this area is called the base or the posterior surface which is been contributed mainly two third by the left ventricle only one third by the right, left atrium and only the right one third by the right atrium generally so this okay bolo 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 left atrium bolam to left atrium two third by the left atrium one third only less than one third by the right atrium that is called the base of the heart or the posterior surface of the heart in the cadaver when we put our hand just posterior to the heart we can reach this area this area is called the oblique sinus oblique pericardial sinus which it is covered by the pericardium and we can reach if we put our fingers here this area is called the oblique pericardial sinus and behind which we will get the fibrous pericardium behind the fibrous pericardium we will reach the posterior mediastinum that means esophagus we will get esophagus we will get the thoracic duct we will get the descending thoracic aorta and also the azygous vein because heart is within the middle middle mediastinum behind we are getting all the major viscera that is the esophagus descending thoracic aorta azygous vein we can see so they are related to the base of the heart they are actually just behind the base of the heart or the posterior surface of the heart because behind the posterior surface we will reach the posterior mediastinum and you know already the the structures within the posterior mediastinum they are esophagus they are the, uh, the, the, the thoracic duct they are the descending thoracic aorta they are the azygous vein hemi azygous vein okay all these things will be present they are they are present behind so we can see this inferior surface this is related to the stomach this posterior surface or the base is related to the esophagus so after heavy meal what will happen yeah the food will enter air will enter and ultimately it will enter the fundus of the stomach okay that within the fundus of the stomach there will be collection of the air and it will press over this area so there will be palpitation so after heavy meal you will feel there is a sense of palpitation okay now about the groups we can see there are some groups
the same figure is written uh, you can see it here the right ventricle right ventricle this is a left right uh, right ventricle right atrium left ventricle okay this is the pulmonary trunk this is the pulmonary trunk and from the left ventricle you can see the aorta is coming out so we can see there are some grooves one groove is in between the right atrium and right ventricle and that groove if we rotate it we can see this groove is continuous posteriorly and also this groove is continuous here also so this groove actually this encircles the heart and it separates the right atrium and right ventricle behind it separates the right atrium right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle so this is a circular groove that groove is nothing but the coronary sulcus because of the fact we can see the anastomosis of coronary artery and originate we can see the coronary arteries right and left they are been accommodated within this groove so this is the this is the coronary sulcus round groove between the atrium and the ventricles one part is on this side this is the right part of the coronary anterior right part anterior right part this is the anterior left part and this is the posterior part of the coronary sulcus another group we can find in between the right ventricle and the left ventricle which is called and also behind between the right ventricle and the left ventricle this is the interventricular group one is atrioventricular group and this is within the ventricles behind we can see this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle this is the interventricular group we can see this is right ventricle left ventricle behind we can see this is the this is the, the posterior part of this uh, same group this is the anterior part of the interventricular group and this is the posterior part of the interventricular group okay and another part is there when is this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is right ventricle left ventricle so we can see there is a group this is interatrial group and this is a interventricular group and this is the coronary sulcus so ultimately it forms a cross here so meeting point of this interatrial interventricular and the coronary sulcus this meeting point is called the cross of the heart cross of the heart okay now what we can find this is a aorta is coming out from the left ventricle and from the aorta on the right side one artery is coming out this is the right coronary artery in between the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle this artery comes down and another artery which originates from the aorta which comes out and and it remains with in between the left auricle and the pulmonary trunk 
then it divides into two branches. One goes in between the left, uh, left auricle and the left ventricle and another passes in between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. This is called the anterior descending branch. This is the left coronary artery, this is the right coronary artery, this left coronary artery divides into one left circumflex branch and one descending branch which is the which is called the anterior descending branch or left anterior descending branch. This is very vital artery which is, which remains in between the interventricular anterior part of the interventricular groove which is called the left anterior descending branch of the coronary artery which is also called the LAD which is also called the widower's artery because this artery actually supplies major part of the left ventricle and also a part of the right ventricle. So, this artery, if that artery gets blocked, immediately there will be a chance of cardiac arrest, which is in our colloquial language we call heart attack. In our words, we call it as a myocardial infraction. Actually, this artery, when actually is is generally blocked. This is the left anterior descending branch of the left, uh, the anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery or left anterior descending branch or in le left anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery in between two ventricles. So, anterior interventricular branch and ultimately it goes back, it goes to the back. The same artery you can see it is coming out. And this left circumflex artery it will surround the left side and it will come and, and it, it will occupy within the coronary sulcus or posterior part of the atrioventricular group and will anastomose with the right coronary artery. This right coronary artery will go back and we can see this is a right coronary artery. There will be an anastomosis between the right and the left coronary artery where within the coronary sulcus or posterior part of the atrioventricular group. Okay. Just where it is a bit left of the crust of the heart. Before that, this right coronary artery gives a branch which goes in between the ventricles. This is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle, in between the ventricles. This is called the posterior interventricular branch. This is anterior interventricular branch and this is the posterior interventricular branch. This posterior interventricular branch is generally contributed by this right coronary artery. Sometimes it may come from the left coronary artery. In 70 to 80 percent of case, this branch is coming from the right coronary artery. It is called right coronary dominance. When it will come from the left coronary artery, it will it, we will call it as left coronary dominance. Generally, the right coronary dominance is common. Okay. That means the posterior interventricular branch is coming from the right coronary artery. Okay. Now, about the veins, one is great cardiac vein, okay. it comes out from the epic, epical region and it, it remains within the anterior interventricular group and ultimately it will, grow, it will accompany the left circumflex branch. 
and ultimately it will end into this great channel of vein the the, the prime venous drainage of the heart this is the this is called the coronary sinus this coronary sinus ultimately drains within the right atrium so this vein is called the great cardiac vein ultimately drains into the coronary sinus again this coronary sinus ultimately drains into the right atrium another vein which is called small cardiac vein which also goes to the it, it, it is present within the it, right atrium and right ventricle this is the atrioventricular group and from the right side it will end directly within the atrium or within the coronary sinus coronary sinus is a sinus which is present within the coronary group posterior part of the coronary group which is the sole the most important venous drainage of the heart okay so this is the small cardiac vein another cardiac vein which is present in between the posterior interventricular branch which is called the middle cardiac vein which directly drains within the coronary sinus coronary sinus means a venous channel which is present in the posterior part of the atrioventricular groove okay and ultimately it drains within the right heart now if we cut open the right atrium suppose we are cutting it from here and it, if we retract it then we can see the interior of the right atrium we can see anteriorly we can see some muscle fibers radiating muscle fibers anterior part is rough while whereas posterior part is smooth this anterior rough part where we can get so many muscle uh, muscle fibers okay these muscle fibers are called the this is the pectinate muscles these are the pectinate muscles and this rough part actually the atrium develops the right atrium or right ventricle develops from two sources one is from the primitive atrium just remember this much one develops from the primitive atrium this rough part develops from the primitive atrium and this smooth part is developed from the right horn of the sinus venosus so this is the smooth part and this is the rough part the anterior part is rough where we can see the pectinate muscle and at the junction we can find a c shaped one ridge muscular ridge which is called crista terminali বেরি যাচ্ছে মাথা থেকে বেরি যাচ্ছে না একটু 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 জানি একটু বেরা হবে আচ্ছা আমি আরো সহজ করে বলছি ইফ উই কাট ওপেন দিস রাইট এট্রিয়াম উই ক্যান ফাইন্ড অ্যান্টিরিয়ার রাফ পার্ট পস্টিরিয়ার স্মুথ পার্ট এন্ড ইন বিটুইন টু উই গেট আ মাসকুলার রিজ মানে উঁচু মতো সি শেপেড that is called crista terminali similarly if we cut it from superior to inferior vena cava just opposite 
to the crystal terminally over the surface we will get a depression which is called sulcus terminally ekta ekta kore dhukuk matha hai this is crystal terminally so this is, you will get crystal terminally here similarly a group we, we can notice outside over the surface that is called the sulcus terminally okay now here we can see this opening of the within that we can see the opening of the superior vena cava here we can see the inside we will see the opening of the inferior vena cava superior vena cava is actually in front it is covered by the crystal terminalis and ultimately it ends here this is the inferior vena cava superior vena cava has got no valve but the inferior vena cava has got valve is called the valve of the inferior vena cava and also we can find one opening this is the opening of the coronary sinus this is the opening this is that opening we can find inside here this is opening of the coronary sinus and over which there is another valve which is called thibesian's valve and above that we can find one opening from atrium to ventricle this is the atrioventricular opening which has got which is bounded by the tricuspid valve 1 2 3 tricuspid valve and this is the area smooth of the smooth part which is in contact with the right and right atrium and the right ventricle okay this is the area so at the septal area we can find one depression and one elevation this depression is called the fossa ovalis and one elevation just above which is called the limbus fossa ovalis crista terminalis this is crista terminalis this is opening of the inferior vena cava which is bounded by a by a valve which is which is called the valve of the inferior vena cava there is no valve in the superior vena cava opening of the coronary sinus which is again bounded above by the by a valve which is called thibesian's valve and over the smooth part which is over just over the interatrial septum here we can see one depression which is called the fossa fossa ovalis fossa means any area where you can lodge something fossa ovalis and above that one ring like structure ridge which is called the limbus fossa ovalis just remember this limbus fossa ovalis is nothing but the remnant of septum secundum and this fossa ovalis is a part of the septum primum and there was a communication in embryonic period from the right to left through an opening which is called the fora foramen ovale from right atrium to the left atrium from right atrium to left atrium there was an opening which is called the foramen ovale we can see the inside of the aorta inside of the aorta there are three swelling one is in front and two is behind okay in front is the aortic anterior aortic sinus the posterior to aortic sinus okay from anterior aortic sinus the right coronary artery will come out from right posterior aortic sinus the left coronary will coronary artery will come out and this posterior right one is non coronary sinus no artery will come out what can we write the importance can you jokhon i amra 
during our angiography we pass a catheter through this area and will reach this area and ultimately the catheter will enter into this artery right coronary artery or left coronary artery and ultimately we can open up the block channel through a balloon which is called the coronary angio balloon angioplasty first die is when a push and we watch where is the block okay die is pushed to the right coronary artery and left coronary artery okay actually we have see, we have heard one thing triple vessel disease the three important vessel is right coronary artery left circumflex branch and the left anterior descending branch the cardiac surgeon or interventional cardiologist they are concerned with these three arteries especially this one and this one this they, they even if there is a block they can leave it as it is but if there is a block with the anterior descending or the left coronary artery they will open up and open up through first they will watch they will push the die okay and they will see whether where is the block they will notice the block area of the block if it is here then they will open up a balloon and ultimately this channel will get opened and the circulation will get established and they will put a stent here one stent over this and one stent over this and generally this artery is left at is as it is generally so when there is a block of three arteries it is called triple vessel disease 